here at Tad Gormley Stadium in City Park. They are tossing the coin. And you can see the coin toss is being uh, administered by uh, some breast cancer survivors. October is Breast Cancer Survivor Month, and they are honoring breast cancer survivors here. Brother Martin has won the toss. They have deferred. Let's go downstairs to Stephanie, who has something special on that. Thank you, Ken. It's a great night for football tonight, especially for the home team, Brother Martin. Not only is it their homecoming, but I spoke with their athletic director, Scott Williams, earlier. They have five programs celebrating reunions tonight after the game. They've been out here tailgating since 4 o'clock this afternoon. The students are restless. Everyone's extremely excited to get this game started. Ken and Wade, back to you. It is always exciting when teams in District 9-5A get set to play, Wade. There's no doubt about it. So no surprises here. You're taking a good look at Eric Robato and uh, his, to his right, defensive coordinator, Adam Giglio, Darius Rodriguez back to receive. And boy, what a job Robato has done in only his second year as the head coach here at Holy Cross. Went five and six his first year, and here he is competing right at the top of District 9-5A in only his second year. And he's doing that with Trey Turner, his starting running back, and his expected senior starting quarterback, Kyle Schecksneider, both sidelined, both seeing limited action, both never playing at full speed like they were supposed to. Blake Perilou gets set to kick this off. And again, Mark Bonice. In his seventh year as the head coach here at Brother Martin, he has built a program that is now just right up at the top of the charts. What a job he has done. And Holy Cross, Kyle Myers will return the kick and will give the Tigers good field position out past the 30-yard line. A return of 26 yards by Kyle Myers. And that brings into the game Chandler Fields, the freshman quarterback, who wasn't even expecting to play this year. It was supposed to be Kyle Schecksneider's team, but instead Chandler Fields comes in after Schecksneider was hurt, re-injuring a foot injury that he suffered last year, and it's been Fields from the beginning. Schecksneider seemed limited action, and Fields has done nothing to hurt this team, only thrown two interceptions this year, which is amazing. 770 yards passing. Can't ask much more than that. He's relied on Trey Turner, who has never been up to full speed as a running back, and uh, Trey Turner carries there not for much. He is one of the players we're keeping a very close eye on offensively for the Holy Cross Tigers and players to watch. Yes, he is. He's one of the key players tonight, Trey Turner, an Arizona State commit who needs to have a big night tonight if Holy Cross is going to be victorious. And also a really fine wide receiver, Darius Rodrigue, and an outstanding offensive lineman, Chris Bologna. We talked about Chandler Fields as a freshman doing nothing to hurt this Holy Cross football team. You'd think a freshman would come in and make a lot of mistakes, but again, out of his 700 yards passing, he's thrown for 10 touchdowns. The two interceptions is impressive, but more impressive than that is he has not fumbled the football. He has not fumbled the ball at all. So first down after the holding penalty, moves Holy Cross back and they'll get a few yards on that pass play. Let's take a look at the key players to watch on this Brother Martin defense. All right. I'll tell you what, there you, here you go. Number seven, Soman Anderson, the leading tackler in the Crusader defense. He has to have a great night tonight in order to stop the Holy Cross running back, Trey Turner, who we talked about earlier. And then there's Andre Walker, physical defensive lineman who has eight sacks on the season. And then an outstanding defensive back, Trey Swilling, who has already received an offer from LSU. Andre Walker doesn't have any big offers, but some people think he might be one of the best defensive linemen in the state. They'll go with Turner again as he spins into the line, will not get the first down. It's going to be third down and long, and Holy Cross moving at a very slow pace early in this football game. Well, both of these teams are going to huddle and get the calls in from the boundary. The thing that happened right here is Holy Cross started off track. They get the holding penalty on first down, sets up a back of first down and uh, 16. Here's the bottom line. you got to win on first down. It's not about third down conversions. It's getting yourself in a situation for first down. Trey Turner with impressive numbers rushing the football, 277 yards, three touchdowns. They need something from him right here. Chandler Fields is in trouble under a big rush, and he will go down a sack back at the 22-yard line. And just an outstanding Andre Walker rush with help from Matthew Clapp. 
Matthew Clapp and Andre Walker right there. We've already talked about Andre Walker being one of the sack leaders uh, for the Brother Martin team. Does a great job uh, getting in there with a nice little swim technique and tackling and getting to Chandler Fields and setting up a punting situation for Holy Cross. Great situation for field position for the Brother Martin offense to take over early in the first quarter. The punter is Jack Heidingsfelder, averages 31 yards a punt, has a lot of time, no rush at all, but he shanks one off the right side of his foot, and it's not going to go very far. It bounced out around the 40, but carried out closer than that. Got a little pushing and shoving that the officials come in and separate up right away. And that shanked punt will place the football down. They're going to mark it. Right at the 41-yard line on only a 19-yard punt. So let's talk about this fine young man, Jake Brogy, completing 61% of his passes and another player who has done nothing to hurt this football team. He started for three years. He and his teammates feel like this is their year. He's only thrown three interceptions on the year. Again, a young man who has not fumbled the football, given him 11 touchdowns, thrown for 1,326 yards. And, of course, he's got the big guy, Bruce Jordan Swilling, running behind him. Fake to Jordan Swilling on the first play and throw to Jeremy Singleton. Singleton is going to find his way into the end zone for the touchdown. One play, one score. Brother Martin, that's the kind of explosive offense you see out of this Crusader team, a 39-yard touchdown play. Great route right there by Singleton. Runs a three-step slant route, catch the ball, throw the ball, and the quick throwing game by Brother Martin results in a quick six points right off the bat. Uh, I tell you what, uh, we talked about Brogy in our pregame show. He has done nothing but put his offense into great situations by making good throws and good decisions. And right there, it was an outstanding throw and catch. Blake Perilou in to attempt the point after. And it is good. So very quickly in this football game, on one play by the Brother Martin offense, they take the lead. Seven to nothing on a beautiful strike to Singleton from Jake Brogy for the score. Brother Martin has an explosive offense, and they show just how explosive on a one-play, 39-yard touchdown strike after the fake to Bruce Jordan Swilling, who everybody in the stadium thought was going to get the football. It's a quick toss to Singleton, and he goes 39 yards for the score. Now Blake Perilou sends it to the Holy Cross Tigers for their second offensive possession of the football game, and Myers will watch this one carry into the end zone, breaks the plane, dead ball comes out to the 20. Well, a lot of weapons on this Brother Martin offense. Boom, you saw it right there. Everybody thinks Swilling's going to get the ball so quickly on the quick pass slant route to, uh, to um, Singleton right there. Singleton's wide over underneath the coverage, hits him on a dead run, and it's a big play right off the bat. You know, Singleton had a big score last week also, or three of them against Sulphur, and uh, he's starting off to, tonight right where he left off last week against Sulphur. Jeremy Singleton, that was his eighth touchdown catch of the year. Holy Cross has to answer. It's the freshman quarterback, Chandler Fields, directing this drive, and he'll shift a couple of receivers, including the big tight end, Tyler Lamb, over to the right side. Trey Turner will get the call, and Brother Martin's waiting for him. 
There is just nowhere to go for the big man, and he gets stuffed on the first play. That was Brennan Brown coming off of his linebacker spot right there, stepping up off of the outside zone stretch play and making a great tackle on the backfield for a loss for the Crusaders. Loss of three yards makes it second down and Outside 13. stretch, another look right there. Boom, great tackle. Nice job, good fill, open wide. Linebackers fill holes when they open, and that's what Brandon Brown did right there. He's the second leading tackler on his brother Martin defense. Fields will drop back and work from the gun with a pistol formation. Right side throw to Darius Rodrigue, and he's knocked out of bounds past the 25-yard line. Well, the wide He'll receiver still be short of the first down a little bit. The wide receiver screen, it's something big, and, you know, you can see his numbers that, that he catches the ball in a lot of these short action plays that are wide receiver screens, allows him to catch the ball and run in the open field. Right there, two receivers out front blocking for him. You can see uh, Wembley out front and Carter out front, and he's trying to split the blocks and get vertical. He's done a nice job of that all year for the Holy Cross offense. Chandler feels, looks at the play, band on his wrist. He needed 13, he got 10. Third down three, Holy Cross has to keep the chains moving. Fields has room to run if he wants it, but instead he will throw to Leighton Johnson. Johnson has the first down and a little bit more. He has passed the 40 up to about the 44-yard line, and that is a big play for Holy Cross to move the chains. Saw a lot of this last night from the Saints, bootleg action. Yeah. Well, they, they slip the back out of the backfield. Leighton uh, Johnson right there slides right out of the backfield into the flats. They get leverage on the Brother Martin defense, and it's an easy throw and catch for a first down for the Tigers. 17-yard gain. Moves the chains. First down, Holy Cross. Chandler Fields taking his time. Holy Cross in no hurry. No speed offense in, in this game. Here's the throw. Almost picked off. And that was played very well by Trey Swilling, the son of Pat Swilling, former Saints great. And he almost was off to the races. <laughs> well, <laughs> No better place to hit him than in the hands. I think I say that every week. That should have been his second pick of the season. He's yes. got one on the year. He's got an LSU offer already as a junior. We've already talked about he is Pat Swilling's uh, uh, son, and uh, he's an outstanding athlete. Six foot, six foot, 185 pound athlete that has a bright future in front of him in the next years to come when he gets into college and through his senior year next year. Yeah, he's only a junior, and already LSU, Michigan, and Tennessee. I'll tell you, Jim Harbaugh's. Uh, you talk about scouting this area very hard as he's turning that Michigan program around. Look out. He might be a, a force to be reckoned with in the recruiting battles down here. Trey Turner over the right side pushes forward for about four yards up to the 47-yard line. Well, you talk about the recruiting battles. We have fine football in the state of Louisiana. You go around this country and you talk to college coaches. They're down here recruiting our athletes because, number one, we have the athletes. Number two, they're coached well. Number three, football means something to the state of Louisiana. So they go places where they can find those three additives, and they're going to get great athletes out of this state. And you can just look at the NFL. You can look at who's going to be playing tomorrow all around the country in all the various conferences. They've got Louisiana players sprinkled all the way through. So there's no wonder Jim Harbaugh will be down here looking at our guys. And one thing that they like about Trey, William Trey Turner, is – that he's a very explosive player. Let's the rush come. Here's the little throw out of the backfield to Turner, and he fights for the first down. It's going to be very close and will depend on the spot. He's very near the first down marker. Well, what I like about Trey Turner is he can run and he can catch. You saw it right there. They set up the screen. They dumped the screen to him. He's good at the backfield. He's what they call an all-purpose running back. Yes, and you see is. that uh, at all levels. These guys that not only are north-south runners, great explosiveness, but they're able to get the ball in their hands out of the backfield and make something happen for their offense. They become all-purpose guys. Eric Roboto has such faith in him as the head coach of Holy Cross. He changed the offense. And I want you to talk about that as Turner shows out of that uh, pro set offense that he can move the football even though not on that down as Brother Martin stacked them up and put a stop to that with the stop being made by Jabari Watts getting a start tonight at a linebacker spot and uh, comes up big on a play. 
Well, you know, you talk about changing the offense. You, you got to sometimes you've got to do some of the things that your athletes that you have will allow you to be able to do. Uh, Holy Cross traditionally for the past few years uh, with Barry Wilson and and now with Eric Roboto, they have been a spread uh, team where they're going to throw the ball and stretch the field vertically in the throwing game. All, along comes Trey Turner. They're going to put him in the eye and let him run the football. Second down, 11. Turner picks his hole carefully, but it closes quickly, and he goes down amongst the pile of players after a two-yard gain. I'll tell you what, that is a lot of team pursuit right there by that Brother Martin defense. A lot of great angles. Run into the ball. You see a lot of red jerseys, gold pants getting there. Look at them getting off blocks right there. They're shedding blocks. are getting there. Number 99, John Booker, defensive tackle, gets off his block and gets out there and does a great job tackling on the outside zone stretch play by Holy Cross. No. If we look at a key to the game for the Holy Cross Tigers, I think one of the things would be to win the time of possession battle, wouldn't it, Wayne? Well, it, it, you win the time of possession battle, uh, that outstanding running back uh, isn't on the field. Yeah, that's it. And that's why Holy Cross is taking their time, just letting it go. Chandler Fields on the keeper that time, but he's short of the first down, and that's going to bring up another third down for Holy Cross. Third and a little bit here, third and about six. And when I talk about that great running back, that's keeping number nine, Bruce George, swilling off the field of Brother Martin. So you're controlling... Fourth. You're fourth down. You're controlling the pace of play. They're going to decide to go for it on fourth down in Brother Martin territory right here. Oh, looks like they're changing up. They're going to make a quick change and try to punt the ball. But they've controlled the clock, uh, and Swilling hasn't touched the ball yet. All right, Heidingsfelder, who is the punter, who averages 31, shanked one off the right side of his foot on his first punt for only 19 yards. Gets a good one this time. Fair catch called for. And made. So, good play by Brother Martin. And with that, we'll take a break. Brother Martin with the lead, 7-0 after a 29-yard punt by the Tigers. Brother Martin with its second offensive possession. They've only had one play and lead 7 to nothing, and they try almost the same play just to the outside this time. And Irv Smith, the big tight end, son of uh, former Saints tight end, is uh, Irv Smith Sr., makes the catch, his first catch of the game. And he's one of our key players of the night, Irv Smith. He's the son of the former Saint Irv Smith, as you just said. And at... The point of attack in the Brother Martin running game, he is brutal. Brother Martin will use him in many ways tonight to open holes. As you can see, hit him out of the backfield with a pass. He is an outstanding football player. And as you can see, he was one of the players to watch. And along with Bruce Jordan Swilling, you, you really haven't seen Bruce Jordan Swilling do very much, but touch that football on his first carry right there. Look at his numbers this year, 169 rushes, 1,410 yards, 25 rushing touchdowns. He also has a receiving touchdown, 26 touchdowns on the year is what he's given this team. And he reminds me an awful lot of number five at LSU, Leonard well, Fournette, when he runs the football. Well, he's number three in the state of Louisiana right now in rushing yards. He's number three in the state of Louisiana right now in scoring points. Uh, he's only a junior. And he is one of the top running back recruits in the nation as a junior. He's got over, he's got over 13 uh, uh, offers already. He just picked up another one yesterday from Oklahoma State. I mean, he has a great future. Chris Collette. Chris Collette is the injured Holy Cross player on the field. Let's take a look at what uh, Bruce Jordan Swilling did the first time we saw him this year. It starts off with there's one touchdown. That was an eight-yard run. Then he gets a 13-yard TD run against St. Stanislaus, following that up with a quick two-yard run. Then he'll blast through from 40 yards. Off he goes again. Nobody can catch him. That was touchdown number four. His fifth touchdown came in a little bit of nine-yard run, and here comes the two big ones, an 80-yard touchdown run, and he's just galloping. Nobody can catch him. He's off to the races, followed by this 82-yard run for a touchdown. All of this in the first half on his way to a 333-yard night. This, at one point, was in 22 minutes of play, and 
got Brother Martin off to a big, big lead over St. Stanislaus. And right there, you knew Bruce Jordan Swilling was going to be something very, very special. Third down, short. Give the Bruce Jordan Swilling. He will pick up the first down. Tell you what. Who has to have a big night for Holy Cross is Jacques Boudreau, outstanding linebacker. Right there, he does a great job stepping up into a huge hole, filling it, and making a tackle on Jordan Swilling. You know, slowing this guy down, he's going to get his yardage. That's going to happen. What they want to make sure that doesn't take place is he gets the big chunks, as we just saw in the video from a few weeks back against St. Stanislaus. On first down... There's that toss. It is caught by Peyton Oakwan, and he goes down hard but has enough for the first down. We'll take a look at some of the key defensive players that we'll keep a close eye on for the Holy Cross Tigers that have to do exactly what you just said Boudreaux and a few of the other players have to do. Well, the guy has got to do a great job tonight is Jock Boudreaux, ULL commit. He's a tackle leader for Holy Cross. He must have a great game tonight and to stop or just slow down Jordan Swillings. Kenny Abier, a two-lane commit, a defensive end outside linebacker. And then there's Kyle Myers, the Florida State commit, outstanding defensive uh, back who has outstanding ability. Fake to Jordan Swilling and then the toss to Irv Smith. And Irv Smith with a nice catch, fingertip catch, for an 18-yard gain to move the chains for another first down. And right now they're just using, using Jordan Swilling as a decoy and well, throwing the football. Well, what they're doing is they're able to hit the seams and the slant routes in the uh, Holy Cross secondary, but they're faking Jordan Swilling. And obviously everybody's keying on him, and it's opening up the routes for those wide receivers. On first down. Quick toss again. This one won't go for very much. And that is to Jordan Swilling coming out of the backfield because he does have hands. They don't use him as a receiver a whole lot. That's only his ninth catch of the year. But he can do it that way if they don't want him to just use the feet and the legs and the power that he has. Second down. About eight. Bruce Jordan Swilling looking to pick a hole. Holy Cross there to stop it. Well, I think Bruce Jordan Swilling will also tell you he's got a great offensive line in front of him. I mean, uh, uh, Nicholas Clem, Red Fleetwood, Victor Quinoz, number 66, Jacob Clapp, who was one of the Clapp brothers, and Justin Reynolds. These guys do an excellent job opening up holes on the inside and outside stretch game for uh, Jordan Swilling. He's only rushed four times in this game for 12 yards, but he's going behind a senior-laden offensive line. Most of the offensive players were returning for the Brother Martin Crusaders, and that's why they felt like this was their year. You're looking at an offense that averages 49 points a game. Bruce Jordan Swilling, they're going to use him out of the backfield again for another catch out of the backfield. He's close to a first down, but I don't think he's got it. Just a little bit short. Well, his helmet just came off on that play, on that little uh, screen pass right there. He's going to have to come off for a play and put another, uh, 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 put another running back on for one play. That's the rule in, in uh, high school football today. Keys to the game, Wade, for well, this Brother Morton team and for Holy Cross. Well, you got, you got a couple anachronisms here. <laughs> Holy Cross has got to win the time of possession, meaning that they've got to control the clock and keep number nine, Bruce Jordan, swilling off the field. And then Brother Martin behind his senior-laden offensive line is going to have to do a great job controlling the Holy Cross defensive line and making sure that Swilling does what he needs to do in order to be able to put points up for the Brother Martin offense. Holy Cross showed blitz. Brogy backed off. Got a new play from the sideline. And then can't get everything set, so Brother Martin calls a timeout. With 53 seconds to play in the first quarter, Brother Martin leading 7 to nothing. Timeout for the Crusaders. Dr. Tony Melito of Winning Actions stresses the importance of developing the total athlete, both physically and mentally, to compete at the highest level on the field and also in life. Call Winning Actions today to learn more about mental training techniques to improve your son or daughter's performance. Well, I'll tell you, love what Tony Melito does with Winning Actions to help kids just be themselves. And when they start performing like they think and know they can, self-confidence goes so far up the ladder. Well, it, it's about not only the self-confidence, but it's also getting them to believe that they can compete at uh, the level that they're playing their athletic competition in. Tony's always going to tell you to make it a great day.
Yes, he will, won't he? Fourth down. He missed it by just a yard. So it's fourth and one at the 34 of Holy Cross. Eric Lasser is in the backfield because Bruce Jordan Swilling has to sit out a play when the helmet popped off. Lasser over the left side of the line pushes the pile forward enough for the first down and Brother Morton moves the chain. So Brother Morton doing just a little bit better job at winning the time of possession right now and that's helping them. Both teams not in any hurry to get the snap off especially Brother Morton right now with a one touchdown lead. Well, Eric Lasser, he's gotten 13 rushes to this point. You haven't seen him much, obviously, because of Bruce Jordan's swelling. But I'll tell you what, he has a lot of talent also, and uh, he's right there. He's always a play away, just ready to go if in case anything happens to number nine. That's the way you've got to get those backups ready to think as a coach. A Jordan swelling back into the game. He will get the call. He will try the right side, and Holy Cross stacks it up, but he's got such power, he just pushes that pile forward it's hard to bring him down even in a gang tackle type situation well right there he kind of stutter stepped I, I I really didn't like how he decided to make a decision watch his feet yeah I mean that, that's everything's closing in on you at that point uh, the bottom line is you got to hit it jump cut if you see something open uh, uh, laterally and then get your shoulder pads vertically and I'm sure that'll be addressed by his coaching staff second down and seven fake to him throw out to the right side this one is caught Singleton and Jeremy Singleton on the catch on the far side. What? And that is the last play of the first quarter. So we have played one here at Tad Gormley Stadium in City Park. Brother Morton with the lead, the crowd loving it. Quarter of play, Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, Stephanie Altman, our field reporter, and the Brother Martin Crusaders with the 11th play of this drive. We're talking about time of possession, controlling the line of scrimmage. The Brother Martin Crusaders on a 10-play, 65-yard drive. Here's the 11th play coming up. The handoff to Bruce Jordan Swilling. He has a hole of the right side, spins into it, and will get enough for the first down, but a flag is thrown. Brother Morton's done a pretty good job of mixing up the rush and the pass on this drive. Seven rushes, five passes, and almost every possession they've had has been like that. Well, this is only their second possession. They scored on the first. Eddie Alamore, our referee, first time we hear from him tonight. Illegal formation. On the offense, five men in the backfield. It's five-yard penalty, third down. Uh, a little mental uh, mistake right there. Somebody did not break the belt of the center, so thus he's in the backfield. You can't do that. 
you got to have seven on the line of scrimmage in this game. And uh, one person was not on the line of scrimmage, which gave him five in the backfield, thus the five-yard penalty. But you're right. The balance is there. And I like the balance. The balance, you've, you've got to be able to balance your offense. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to revert back to that great Saints wins last night. 32, uh, what was it, 32 runs, 39 passes last night for the Saints. And they, stu- and they stuck to the running game. They did not right. abandon. I mean, the Saints so, have a tendency to abandon that running game right. and just let Drew Brees throw it. But not last night. They stuck with the balance you love to talk about. Here's Brogy. And he's on the run on third down. He'll throw. Caught. And this a big completion on the far side. That, who else? Bruce Jordan swilling out of the backfield. And Brogy is now 6 for 6 on the night. A little more than 81 yards if we count the yardage on this play. And he's got a touchdown and is driving Brother Morton uh, near the goal line of Holy Cross, threatening again. It's off the play-action pass. Once again, it's, it's like I talked about in the pregame show. He, you know, he's a field general. Nothing was open downfield. He holds onto the ball. He buys times with time with his feet. Swilling slips out of the backfield, and then uh, Brogy jumps the ball to him for a nice pickup. Now Brody, uh, Brogy, rather, six for six. In this game, 103 yards. He just went over 100 yards passing. He'll hand off to Bruce Jordan Swilling. Big hole. Jordan Swilling with it. He's hit, driven back by Kenneth Carradine. Well, it's the inside zone. He makes a nice cut, jump cut back to his left, sticks it up inside, and he's hit hard right up in the hole by, like you said, Kenneth Carradine. And I tell you what, that, uh, you know, it, it was a nice cut. He didn't hesitate that time. You know, he hit the hole with purpose, and that's the way you want to see great running backs do things. Boy, there's so many weapons on this Brother Martin team, from Singleton so, you're not kidding. to Second number 80, down. Dennis Robertson, Bruce Jordan swelling. He's, you know. Second to goal of the three, Bruce Jordan smelling. Oh, when you give him that type of a seam, he's going to hit it and score as he does from the three-yard line. That is his 26th rushing touchdown of the year, 27th overall. Outside zone stretch. It got sealed off real nice by that offensive line. They do a great job with their zone steps. They work up to the next level. They seal everything inside. And uh, Swilling, Jordan Swilling, walks in without getting touched. Blake Perilou in to attempt the point after. Andrew McGuire is the holder. And he kicks it up and through. So with 10.26 to play in the first half, Brother Morton has taken a two-touchdown lead over Holy Cross. And here goes Bruce Jordan Swilling with another score. Brother Martin with the lead over Holy Cross, 14 to nothing, and we have seen nothing but just good power offense and a quarterback, Jake Brogy, who has not missed a pass yet. 14 plays, 88 yards, 5 minutes and 52 seconds on the last drive. Myers can return this one. He's got room, and he'll run east and west, coming to the far side, hit hard and driven down at the 16-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Stephanie Altman. Stephanie? Thank you, Ken. Last week, Holy Cross inducted their first ever Hall of Fame class. Some of the inductees include current athletic director Barry Wilson, former coach John Callbacker, and former greats Butch Dewey and Hank Larisella. 
These men, along with others, were recognized for their exceptional athletic achievements and leadership contributions both on and off the field. Ken and Wade, back to you. Uh, what an impressive <laughs> list in Holy Cross's Hall of Fame. Glad Holy Cross initiated a Hall of Fame. I think it took way too long. Happy to see that. Too many people for the Holy Cross Tigers that need to be recognized. And uh, so many great names on that list. Trey Turner on first down, and right now Holy Cross just can't get inside. I take that back. That's Ashton Smith on the run. Trey Turner not in there right now. Ashton Smith is a capable running back. Uh, as, as Trey Turner was a little bit injured earlier in the year, Ashton Smith filled in for him, and to date he's got 81 attempts, 390 yards. He's been averaging 4.8 yards a carry, three touchdowns on the season. He's a big, strong guy, 180-pound uh, running back, and i tell you what, I like this guy. He's physical. He's a north-south runner. He's a senior, puts his head down, just goes at everything real hard. And this time Chandler Fields is in trouble, and right now there's just no answer for this Holy Cross offense. They're, they're struggling to get it, and uh, the Brother Morton defense is doing everything right. That time the big push put on by Andre Walker. That's the second sack for Andre Walker tonight. I'll tell you what, they tried to bootleg him. Those coaches upstairs are trying to see how the backside end is, is, is uh, being affected by the zone running game away from them. So if that end is trailing, they're going to try to run the boot around him. Well, that time, they didn't fool Andre Walker. Andre Walker played the boot perfectly and picks up his second sack of the night. Well, Holy Cross moves back eight yards on that sack, making it third down and 18. And you know, we were talking during the break that this is a, an important drive for Holy Cross. They've got to answer. They've got to make something happen. They're going to need the long pass to get there. And an overthrow by Chandler Fields and a flag thrown. The pass was intended for Brett Carter. Double coverage and maybe some bumping. So let's see what happens here. Well, if it's an interference penalty either way, let's see what Eddie Alamore has to say here. If it is an interference penalty either way, offensively or defensively, and here we go, here's Eddie Alamore. Pass interference on the defense, 15 yard penalty, third down. All right, a lot of people remember a couple years ago the uh, Federation rules that governs all high school football took away the first down, automatic first down on all interference penalties in high school. So uh, it's not a automatic first down. It's 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, and this will set up a third and three right here. Yeah, it was third and 18 after the eight-yard sack. So that helps Holy Cross, but they still have to pick up the first down. So they need three yards on this very key third down play. Ashton Smith is the running back. Chandler Fields is going to keep it. He's hit. He falls forward, and I think he's got it. I think he's got it. And Holy Cross got what they needed so desperately right there. A young, small freshman quarterback making a play, moving the chains, and keeping a drive alive with eight and a half minutes to play in the first half. And Holy Cross trailing. They've got to get on the score. Lon Elsey, the offensive coordinator at Holy Cross, was telling me before the game that nothing shakes this guy. You know, he's Ice a freshman. Veins, right? <laughs> he, he's, he's a freshman, and nothing shakes him. You know, he's, uh, he's a film rat. He's a gym rat. He's the type of kid that you want to be able to groom and bring along. And I tell you what, he is what they call a ball. This guy is an outstanding uh, future quarterback. Ashton Smith, he'll pick a hole and has another first down. Back-to-back -back first down for the Holy Cross Tigers as Ashton Smith rumbles up to the 42-yard line. Told you I like the way this guy runs. He's a north-south guy. He's going to duck his shoulder. He's going to pick up the extra yard and fall forward. And he does that right here. You'll see a great job by the offensive line, a little counter play right there where they're going to pull the counter tray. They're going to pull the guard. They're going to pull the backside tackle, get a kick out, and sticking it up in the hole is Ashton Smith picking up a first down. You know, he ran behind the center, Chris Bologna, also Mason Boudreaux, the right guard, and Isaiah Carpenter, the right tackle. Smith. 80 rushes on the year, 387 yards, like we said earlier. Good numbers on the year. Gets the call again, and boy, he hits, was hit, and then just takes the defender with him, the tackler with him for a couple of yards. But that was a good, jarring hit by Jabari Watts, as we said earlier. Got a start tonight. Here we go. Inside zone. Great, great technique on the handoff. He bounces it to the outside, and up comes Jabari Watts, making a great form tackle right there on Ashton Smith. 
I tell you what, that might be the hardest five yards Ashton Smith will earn in this football game. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I like. I, I like the way Turner and Smith, they, they keep their legs fresh. They've been alternating the running backs, uh, especially since Trey Turner has gotten well after week three. And uh, it, it's, it's good for the whole offense. Second down and five. Nowhere to go on the run. Everybody stuffed. Well, Aston Smith trying to make something happen, just can't do it. And you've got to credit this Brother Martin defense. Sometimes they're just hard to run against. Boy, I tell you what, great job by 99, John Booker right there. You saw him pressing. You know, defensive line coaches teach they got to get their hands inside into the chest plate of that offensive lineman, and they want to lock out and they want to press. If they're getting reached, they want to push, push, push with their outside hand, pull with the inside hand, and then shed a block quickly, and he did a great job right there getting off of that block and making that hit. And as the line was moving to the front right, Andre Walker made sure that it went sideways and not forwards. Look at Chandler Fields. He's got his capability. He throws and it's caught down around the 38-yard line. Good catch down there. And when the Tigers needed one, they get it from Jordan Alexis for 17 yards. Brother Martin runs a little nose tackle stunt inside, a little twist right there. And I tell you what, Chandler Field feels the pressure, and he escapes it by moving to his right and finding the wide open receiver on the scramble drill for the first down. Both feet in. That would have been good in the National Football League. That would have been good on a Sunday. <laughs> nice play by Jordan Alexis, his first catch of the day and fourth of the year. First down for the Tigers. They get a little run to work with Ashton Smith, and again, there's that hard power running. Wade likes so much, he showed why. Everybody! Well, right there, they do it off a draw action. They set it off a three-step drop, a little delay action to Ashton, who runs the little draw right up the center. You can see one, two, three, boom, there's the draw. They're wrapping around the guard. Number 76, Christian Faulkner, comes around and wraps up and gets up into the hole on the linebacker. A nice pickup, nice game for Ashton Smith. Five carries, 25 yards for Ashton Smith. Second down, four. They're going to give it to Smith again. He slants off the right side, has some room, and has the first down. So the Tigers are moving the chains. One thing we're seeing from Holy Cross on this drive that we didn't see on the first two drives that ended, both ended in punts, is what we saw from them earlier this year against Jesuit. The long, sustained drive that will give you a chance to put seven on the board, and they need that. Well, they're doing, they're controlling the clock, they're controlling the uh, pace of the play, and they're controlling number nine from Brother Martin. That's the bottom line. That's the only way you doing. can control him is to gang tackle if he's in the game and try like heck to keep him on the bench. Well, and that's where he's at right now, and that's what Holy Cross is doing, and that's part of their game plan. First down for the Tigers, Ashton Smith again. They just keep feeding him the football, and he keeps running hard, hit hard, and then bounced out of bounds. That was a tough play on the far side. Outside zone stretch for Ashton Smith right there. You're going to see him stretching it to his right. Boom, there he bounces outside. He takes it to the boundary and coming up to make that play right Bailey there. Nuss. Bailey Nuss does a nice job knocking him out of bounds. But even with that, he picks up five yards, Ashton Smith does. They're working that clock down as far as they can work it. You know, another, another thing that's very important here is they're – they're doing the right thing on first down. They're wanting to stay in front of the chains on first down. First down is so important now. Everybody thinks third down is. It's all about first down. The 11th play of the drive. Here is the toss. Intercepted. Brother Morton has the football on a pick. And here they come. That was Ryan, Ryan Alfonso. Alfonso. And right. Ryan Alfonso got a start tonight. So how's that? He gets a start in tonight's game for the Brother Martin Crusaders. And talking with John Norris before the game, what about Ryan Alfonso? He says, we put him in here, and guess what? All of a sudden, good things started to happen. Well, good things happen right there. He steps in front and makes the play. So with that, we'll take a break. Brother Martin's football when we come back.
here real quick and uh, it, it was a great interception by Ryan Alfonso who got a big start uh, two weeks ago against the John Curtis uh, Patriots uh, in a big game that Brother Martin won a few weeks back against uh, John Curtis. Ryan Alfonso breaks on the ball real well and picks the ball off and I tell you what that really hurts Holy Cross trying to run that clock and keep number nine off the field. That yeah, was a good throw and, and look Ryan Alfonso just made a great defensive play. Look at Bruce Jordan swelling as he just picks his way through everybody and gets the first down. Well, you can, let his, you can let his athleticism talk for itself right there yeah. on that run. You know, he takes it off tackle on, on, on the sweep, cuts it back to his left. He's going down, puts his hand on the ground, a little running back drill. Right there, hand down on the ground, fighting for extra yardage. And look how his shoulder pads are falling forward. Everything is going forward to pick up the extra yardage. First down for the Crusaders. Fumbled the football, Brogy. You don't see that happen very much. That was a direct snap, not to Brogy, but to backup quarterback John Paul Pierce, who had just come into the game. And I didn't see Brogy get hurt on the last play. So, but John Paul Pierce did come in there and watch. He can't handle this snap. Well, he's a backup quarterback. He's a sophomore, six foot, 165 pound sophomore. They might have a little bit of butterflies right there when he had to take that snap and try to hand it off to uh, Jordan Swilling. Puts the ball on the ground. Brogy's back in there. So, for whatever reason, he came out for one play. He's back under center. He will give the Bruce Jordan Swilling, and Bruce Jordan spins into the line and gets up to about the 35 yard line. Nice tackle right there by number 54, Josh Gilliard. Does a great job working down the line of scrimmage and coming up and making a play right there on Swilling. Swilling's going to, you know, he's going to get his yardage. You know, he's going he's gonna to get the things that he needs in order to be able to get the numbers. But what's going to happen, and you can see right there, he's already at 47 yards. But what Holy Cross has to do is they've got, and they've done it so far, keep him away from the big, big breaks. Good play action to Bruce Jordan Swilling, and there's the toss, and Jeremy Singleton cannot pull it down. Excellent coverage by the Tigers. Excellent coverage by Kyle Myers, Florida State commitment, the cornerback, six foot, 161-pound senior, who does a great job right there covering the big play threat, Jeremy Singleton coming across the top and knocking the ball away. Tell you what, Kyle Myers is, is an outstanding athlete. He does a great job on punt, punt returns, kick returns. Florida State that saw film on this guy and saw what type of future he's going to have in college. And remember, when we say Florida State commit, LSU and Ole Miss also wanted this kid. A commitment is not a guarantee. We've seen kids change their mind up to seven or eight times. Most of them don't. Most of them hold to their commitment, but many of them in that last week or two, when things get hectic in recruiting, will change their mind many, many times. And there's a partially blocked punt. Scramble for it over on the right side. Tell you what, that is the second punt in the past two weeks Holy Cross has blocked. They blocked a big one last week uh, against Rummel uh, to score one of their touchdowns and then tonight they come up big on this punt well usually the guy that blocks him and he's got five field goal blocks and a punt block is cj white i don't think cj got that one in the pile i missed it so we'll have to wait and see but holy cross gets the football back at the brother martin 35 great field position to start a drive their best field position to start a drive chandler fields on the run chandler fields on the throw and this one is an incomplete pass. Just wide right there to Jordan Alexis. Couldn't uh, catch up to He made a great catch like that right. on the last series. Right. Last series, kind of the same thing. Fields gets flushed out uh, by the uh, Brother Martin defense. He has run to his right. Look for a scrambling receiver trying to work back to the quarterback in what do they call a scramble drill. And it was just a little wide for Jordan to get his gloves on it. At the 35-yard line of Brother Martin, second down for the Holy Cross Tigers. Chan Fears has a little bit of time, and he'll run. He's being chased. Turns on the afterburners. He'll keep it all the way. Dives for the first down and has it as we near the two-minute mark here in the first half. 
Holy Cross and Brother Martin fans, Mellow Mushroom will donate 10% of your order to your school's athletics department through Saturday night. Stop by the Metairie or even the Covington location. Tell your server you're a fan and give back to your school with the best pizza in town. Stay mellow at the Mellow Mushroom. A 12-yard run by Chandler Fields to move the chains, keep it alive. Fields drops back. He's going for it all to Brett Carter. A little bobble and a knockdown on a Good defensive play by Trace Swilling again. Well, I tell you what, it, it started with the scramble, the play before by Fields. Once again, he gets flush, keeps his eyes down the field, and he knows where he's got to get to get the chains, sets up this nice pass. From the standpoint, he gets great protection, and he throws it deep, trying to get it up top to number nine, Brett Carter. But I tell you what, doing a great job right there was Trey Swilling in a look and lean situation where he's trying to get his body into the receiver, looking and leaning. The receiver's head turns, his head turns, and knocks it away at the last second. Very nice technical play right there by Swilling. Chandler Fields. He'll try the Trey Turner screen pass right side. Little outlet pass just to save it, and he fights hard for the first down. It's going to be very, very close. He's down to about the 13-yard line. And did he make it or not? He did. Holy Cross moves the chains. I'll tell you what, does a nice job right there looking down the field. Everything's ran off. They ran off the coverage. Everything's covered. And this is showing the gamesmanship of this freshman, Chandler Fields. Dumps the ball off to his uh, uh, bubble receiver right there, Trey Turner, who goes and picks up the first down, which is big for this Holy Cross team. Well, while uh, they take a look at one of the injured Brother Martin football players, let us remind you that Time, it is time now for Traditions presented by Joseph A. Bank, the new tradition since 1905, with locations downtown in Metairie and in Mandeville. If one name is synonymous with Brother Martin football, it's Bob Conlon, the Crusaders' head coach for 27 years. His 203 wins are the most by any coach in the Catholic League history. And he led Brother Martin to its only state title in 1971. Conlon is a member of the Greater New Orleans and the Louisiana High School Halls of Fame. Bob Conlon, you know he's got 203 wins, but that winning record might be in jeopardy because Rummel's J. Roth last week won his 200th. Well, I'll tell you Real what, I, I had the opportunity to coach for a few years at Brother Martin. What a great institution, and I definitely heard the echoes of Bob Collin walking through the hallways of that great institution. He was such an outstanding coach, but uh, everything else, he was he was coaching uh, when I was playing. I had the opportunity to coach against him when I was an assistant in the league, and I tell you what, everything within what he taught his uh, kids and in the program was not just football, but it was about life itself. Well, that coach you're looking at on the sideline is the defensive coordinator, John Norris. What a great story in his own right. We'll talk about him later. Tosses over to the right side to Darius Rodriguez. He has been very quiet in this football, but he makes a catch and goes out of bounds. Holy Cross needing to stop the clock, and they do with 1 minute and 35 seconds to play in the first half. They've got to get on the board. Gets rid of the ball fast right out towards a little bubble uh, by Darius Rodriguez, who picks up, uh, comes down close to the five-yard line right there, trying to get in and trying to get a score right here before halftime, going in halftime with a little momentum. Gain of two, second down, eight. It's more working that clock with 154 to play in the half than anything else. Chandler Fields on a delay. Trey Turner straight ahead. He's inside the 10 and uh, carries a rugby scrum down. Ball got loose, but I think he was down first. Draw play. He, he, he got it anyway. He right. picked it back up. Right. Draw play right there to Turner. Hits it right up the middle. And Holy Cross spins uh, another timeout. Uh, I think that might be their... Uh, their second to last time out. They might have one more inside the 10 yard line. Yeah, I believe Holy Cross will have one more time out. Athletes are constantly searching for a physical edge in sports. But what about the mental edge? At Winning Actions, Dr. Tony Melito teaches athletes how to focus, control negative thinking, and perform under pressure. Call Winning Actions today to boost your son or daughter's confidence in sports, school, and life. Brother right Martin at Holy Cross, you're taking a good look right there. That's Mark Bonice, the head coach on the right, and the guy you're looking at there, John Norris, the defensive coordinator. Tell and you what, he does a great job, coach, and this guy 
uh, uh, you know, played professional football. He was the president general manager of the Voodoo here in uh, in New Orleans. Uh, I've gotten the opportunity to know the guy. He knows a lot about played with uh, the Bears def- and the Patriots, right? Defensive football, and I tell you what, he gets his kids to play hard every time out. Asked him who was the toughest guy he ever went up against in pro football. He said without question John Hanna, the offensive lineman. He was like Big Bad John or Fred Flintstone all together. So tough. Oh, a hard hit that time as Kim Wimberly makes the catch and then is banged into. No gain on that play. Tell you what, great tackle by Taylor Swallow right there. Uh, comes Strong safety comes right out of nowhere. Comes up and watch it. Boom! Shoulder tackle. That's the way it's taught. Stick good. that shoulder in there, wrap those arms, keep that head out of it, and make a good, hard, physical shoulder pad tackle. Nice tackle by Swallow right there. Well, clock is still running. 45 seconds to play in the half. Well, I think they're going to run the clock all the way down. And on the fourth down, I'm, I'm thinking they're going to kick the field goal here. Go in, make sure that they have points uh, into the locker room. Take that time out and kick the three or attempt to kick the three. They want to get some sort of momentum. It's, we'll cut it to a, um, you know, a, a one-score game, and after that, and come in, get things straightened out at halftime. Well, that is, I'm saying that's the Holy Cross final timeout, but I think they have one. My, my mark is off, and I believe they have one timeout remaining. But again, with 35 seconds, they're looking at, it's not going to really matter because this is fourth down. If you're interested in purchasing a DVD copy of today's game, send an email to prep, P-R-E-P, prep at sportsnola.com or call our offices at 504-681-0120 during normal business hours. You will receive a reply with more information on how to purchase a DVD. You know, we were talking about John Norris there, Ken, just a minute ago. That was the fifth negative play the Brother Martin defense has put up tonight against the Holy Cross offense. You know, when you start talking about negatives and you talk about takeaways and you talk about things like that, if you're on the positive side of those plays as a defense, you're going to probably end up uh, uh, getting yourself a chance to win a football game. And I'm sure he's been preaching that to his guys tonight. Norris has a knack for just putting the right people in the right spot, like Jabari Watts getting a start tonight, making some big plays, and the interception by Alfonso, who got a start a couple of weeks ago and started again tonight. Makes a big difference. Here's Chandler Fields on fourth down. He will throw incomplete of the end zone. Incomplete. Oh, my goodness. And broken up by, guess who? Ryan Alfonso. I really thought Holy Cross would have, uh, you know, taken the three right there and come away with some points to go in at halftime with some momentum. You can see the replay right there right off the hands of the Brother Martin defender. Uh, Ryan Alfonso, and I tell you what, he's lucky that wasn't picked. Uh, well, I, you know, I said broken up, but it really wasn't. The, I don't know if the if the intended receiver fell down, but Ryan Alfonso was the closest to the football, and it looked like the intended receiver had slipped down and couldn't get to that football. Well, I, I, I think they needed to take the three right there, Ken. I, think I you wish needed, they would You needed have, to yeah. walk in with some sort of point momentum and let you guys know you're right back in this thing that we can move the ball and score. Bruce Jordan Swilling can be dangerous in a situation like this when they send him outside and hope to get him in space. He carries it out to the 20-yard line, maybe the 21-yard line on the mark, and there's 21 seconds to play in this first half. Brother Martin in the lead, 14-0. Thought for a moment Holy Cross was going to use that long, sustained drive to get some points on the board, but it didn't work, and you can take a good look at Jake Brogy. He's engineered some excellent drives tonight, and again, a young man that just doesn't make mistakes. He said... This offense has been together for a long time. They came so close last year when they lost to John Curtis in the playoffs, and they avenged that loss by beating Curtis this year in the first 9-5-A game for them. They want to go to the dump. They want to win it all. They feel like this is their time. Well, Brother Martin takes the time out. They're going to talk over what they're going to do on this play right here. First thing he's going to say in that huddle is, if we're running the ball, let's make sure we don't uh, put it on the ground. Let's don't make a mistake and uh, give uh, Holy Cross a field position to take another shot. Um, you know, just from that standpoint, uh, you know, the, the, the thing about it is, is they want to make sure that they're going to try to get something going right here. With 21 seconds, they might take a shot. Eric Roboto, and uh, you can sell the frustration on his face. You know, we, we can 
Talk about the power ratings, and that might be one of the most frustrating things because Brother Morton, right now number two in the power ratings, Holy Cross number six. So they're a little, that's the key spot. Remember, the first six teams in power ratings get the bye. And uh, Holy Cross has got the more tenuous position here because if they don't win this football game, they could slip. Might not, but they could slip, depending. It's a complicated formula. And here comes Bruce Jordan swilling, just trying to make something happen. Clock running, 12 seconds, 11 seconds. Will Brother Morton stop it? They have a timeout if they choose to use it. Well, they use a timeout right there. They pop the outside run play right here off the counter play. He pops it to the boundary, gets up the field. Nice pickup, but what they do is they call timeout. Now they're in a situation where they might be able to take one shot down the field. Now, this uh, isn't the kind of two-minute drill you and I are used to seeing. I'm expecting Brogy to throw, and they're just putting the hands in, or putting the football in the hands of uh, Bruce Jordan Swilling and say, see if you can break one of those long ones we've seen you break in so many games this year. Well, a lot of times a two-minute drill or the hurry-up offense isn't so much about throwing the ball. It's about getting yourself in a position where you can take that one shot if you have to take it or take that kick if you're trying to kick a field goal. And you can see Jordan Swilling, you know, the 13 rushes. You know, he's getting his yardage tonight, 73 yards and one touchdown. Well, that's it's, actually quiet by his standards. Well, by his standards, but like I by said, you know, he's, he's going to get his yardage tonight. You can't let him have the big one. Now, I, I keep saying that. You can't let him rip one off for 73, 74 yards. Again, you've got a first down for Brother Martin, but you've got 12 seconds. So it's, it's here, just not let him get deep, not let him beat anybody. Here's the old uh, lateral play to Bruce Jordan, swilling after the catch, and Bruce Jordan's down inside the 40-yard line, down to the 38. So a little razzle-dazzle trickery. And they find a way to get that ball in the hands of Bruce Jordan Swilling one way or the other. Three seconds left, two seconds left, one second left. They didn't call timeout because they didn't have a timeout to call, and they didn't spike the football and get it in play. So the half may end, or will it? Let's see. The officials are huddled at the close to the 50-yard line. They might put time back on the clock. Let's see. Well, Aren't they, they, to they need the to put time to back the on the clock because they didn't stop the clock for the movement of the chains. Correct. It was a hook and lateral. Didn't get out of bounds. Got the first down. Should have stopped the clock. Didn't stop the clock. Not a good job by the timekeeper, so they're going to put some seconds back on the clock. I'm guessing three. Two to three seconds on the clock. So now, uh, once again, Brother Martin will put themselves in a situation where they can take a shot here uh, on Brogy's arm to the end zone. They have put no time back on the clock. Right now, the Holy Cross coaches are frustrated. Eric Rovato is going, hey, the clock's reading zero. Let's go into the locker room. But you are well, correct, Wade, that they did not stop the clock to move the chains on the first down. You know, rightfully so. And I, I, I've been on the both ends of this, you know. And I've, I've, I've been on you know, uh, the, the Brother Martin end begging for extra time. You can see the hook and lateral here. If, are they going to show us if, if we're going to get a chance to see our hook and lateral line? I don't know if we're going to see it or not. But at, what we saw there was a, a curl play with a lateral back to Swilling coming out of the uh, backfield, picking up the first down. And like I said, I've been on the side where Eric Roboto is. I've been screaming about, hey, well, there's zero time left on the clock. And uh, any way you look at it, I've won some, I've lost some. I think Eric Roboto is going to lose this one. And there's going to be at least, oh, they're going to put six back on the clock? Well, the, I was thinking more like three. I was thinking three also, but the officials huddling back at the 25, 26-yard line behind the Holy Cross defense. And right now they've got six seconds back on the clock. That could be two plays at six seconds. There's the curl. There's the lateral. Jeremy Singleton to Bruce Jordan Swilling, and Bruce Jordan Swilling for extra yards, breaking one tackle, and then getting it all the way down to where we are now, the 30 nine-yard line, and now Brother Martin will take a spike the ball, take a knee, but the clock has run down to one second, so he spiked it, and they still ran another three seconds off the clock before it stopped. Had six seconds on the clock to start with. They spiked the ball. Clock should have stopped, and they should have at least have at least three seconds left on the clock right here. That's what I'm thinking. It's down to one. Now, here's my issue. Why spike the ball? You had all that time to get your play set up. And uh, are you going to do anything different in one second that you wouldn't have done in six seconds? Good play. play should have been called, should have been lined up, ready to go to run the play, and they spike it. you got four seconds put back on the clock off the spike. I'll tell you what, the officials are having a rough time tonight with the clock. Jeremy Singleton is up to the top of your screen, man coverage. That's who Brogy might be looking for. He is looking in that direction. He is going to throw long over the middle to Jeremy Singleton and is 
batted down on a crank. Intercepted by Kyle Myers. He got it. He didn't bat it down. He intercepted it on the last play of the game. Kyle Myers. I'll be doggone his third interception of the year. Another look at this last play of the game. Well, you can see uh, it right there. They're taking, their, they're taking their wow. shot down Look the field. Get up. And then there's Kyle Myers doing a great job in the man coverage, coming up and over and taking the ball away at the high point. Great play right there. And he held the football. I thought he dropped it. He held the football. Brother Martin, however, still leads 14-0. Kyle Myers saved another touchdown. Back with halftime right after this. Back to halftime here at Tad Gormley Stadium in City Park, New Orleans. Brother Martin leading Holy Cross 14 to nothing. The Tigers have had an opportunity but couldn't push it across the goal line. But we've seen some fabulous offense, mostly from the passing game and not so much from Bruce Jordan Swilling. With that in mind, Wade Kaiser, Ken Berthelot here, Stephanie Altman down on the field. Coach, what do you think? Did, uh, you, uh, did, did the first half unfold like we thought it would? Well, I think it's one of those Catholic League brawls. It's physical, number one. <laughs> oh, Both yeah. sides of the ball, it's physical. You've got great offensive line play up front, great defensive line play up front. And I tell you what, Holy Cross has done an admirable job so far on Bruce Jordan Swilling. Number one, they've kept him off the field. Yes. Okay? Uh, Bruce George Swilling is going to get his yardage. He's going to go over 100 yards tonight. It's going to happen. But they have done a good job making him earn every one of them. What is really interesting and what I like to see is the balance out of the Brother Martin offense, the way Brogy has gotten the ball, and how offensive coordinator Mike LeBlanc has gotten the ball spread around to the Brother Martin offense. You know, he's gotten it into the hands of Irv Smith. He's gotten it in the hands of Singleton. So Swilling isn't the only feature here tonight. The other weapons are taking place. So it's been nice to see those things out of the Brother Martin offense, but also kudos to this Holy Cross defense. They've got to take care and score some points when they get the opportunity. As we look at the stats, you'll see Swelling does have his 100 yards. And uh, matter of fact, 
73 on the ground, 38 receiving. It's just not on the ground, all on the ground, like we would have expected. As you look at the stats, anything stick out that's uh, obvious, more obvious than we would have expected it to be for you? I'm looking at Holy Cross's passing yards. I thought they would have more than 61 in the first half. Well, Brother Mark's doing a great job in their run defense against Holy Cross, but what jumps out at me right there is the passing yards by Brother Mark. 128 yards passing. A lot of it was on the first play, uh, uh, which we're going to look at here in a few minutes. But I tell you what, uh, you just haven't seen that out of Brother Martin the past few weeks, 128 yards passing in the first half. And all the rushing yards have come from who else? Bruce Jordan Spilling. Dangerous in space. Holy Cross has been able to bottle him up. What they have not been able to stop is the arm of Jake Brogy throwing that football to make something happen as we take a look at the Brother Martin band. So we'll take a break and be back with... Uh, the second half and more. This was the first score for the Brother Martin Crusaders when Jake Brokey hit Jeremy Singleton for 39 yards on the touchdown. The Crusaders have never trailed since.
Homecoming for the Brother Martin Crusaders as they crown the homecoming queen at Tad Gormley Stadium here in City Park, New Orleans. Always exciting when it's homecoming and a lot of the alums come back, even if it's for only this game of the year. Well, homecoming's big for the alumni in the city of New Orleans. It's the only city I know of that asks you where you went to high school. They're not worried about where you went to college. Let's go downstairs. Stephanie Altman. Stephanie? Thank you, Ken. I talked to Coach Bernice at halftime. He's obviously happy with how his players are playing. He said they want to, want to see the ball more. You have to understand, Brother Martin has only had three possessions all night. As far as Coach Grado goes, he says he just wants his players to play with a pulse. He referred to them as sleepwalking during the game. He wants to be more sound defensively. Offensively, he just wants to come off the football. Ken and Wade, back to you. Thank you, Stephanie. And to get a feel for how things didn't go offensively the way Holy Cross had hoped they were going to go, that sleepwalking, so to say, as Stephanie just talked to Eric Roboto about. Uh, Ashton Smith, not Trey Turner, was the leading rusher, seven times for 38 yards. The rest of the team combined, which means mostly Trey Turner and uh, your quarterback, Chandler Fields, 13 for 16 yards. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, Holy Cross has done one thing. They've controlled the time of possession. Uh, you know, Stephanie said it, that Brother Martin would want to get the ball more as far as uh, possessions. They only had it 80, eight, uh, 8 minutes and 36 seconds, whereas Holy Cross had it for 15 minutes and 14 seconds. But what Holy Cross <laughs> did not do is they did not score points when they're inside the red zone. They had 11-play, 64-yard drive that resulted in an interception. They had an 8-play, 25-yard drive that went out on downs. We thought they were going to kick the field goal on fourth down. They forced the pass in the inter into the end zone and it didn't, uh, wasn't successful. They come away with no points. I can see where Eric Roboto feels some of his guys are kind of sleepwalking, so I'm sure he kind of put a foot up somebody's rear end in that locker room. Let's see how things happen here in the second half for him. Well, a squib kick will go to Jeremy Singleton and Singleton Coming to the near side, doesn't go down, manages to regain his balance and find a second step. Look out, Singleton going down the sidelines. He's going to go all the way for the touchdown. Jeremy Singleton opens up the second half with a 77-yard run, a run that looked like he was going to be stopped dead in his tracks, and he goes all the way for the score. I'll tell you what, his second score on the night, you got to tackle the guy. Great idea on the squib kick. There's the squib kick right there, picks the ball up, Missed tackle right there. Puts his hand on the ground. Gets up. Missed tackle right there. Everybody stopped their feet on the kickoff team. They stopped and watched. You can't do that against a talented guy like uh, Singleton. His second touchdown of the evening. He scored on the first offensive possession. The first play for Brother Martin in the first half of this football game was a 39-yard touchdown catch from Brogy penalty flag on the extra point and then he comes out and it's Jeremy Singleton again on special teams scoring on the first play of the second half. Eddie Alamore. Dead ball encroachment defense number four at the distance replay the try. Well number four right there C.J. White who uh who we, 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 we didn't get to see it, but we think he blocked a punt tonight. He blocked uh, uh, a punt If he does, last that's week. his second punt right. to go but along with five field, uh, field goal extra points. All right, well, he li <laughs> lines up off sides right there. They kind of caught him right there. But I tell you what, he is a heck of a talent in blocking kicks for Holy Cross. But he lined up off sides and moved the ball half the distance uh, to the goal line for Brother Martin on the PAT. Perilou. Well, boot this one up and through. And on one play, the kickoff for the second half, it's 21 to nothing. Brother Martin with the lead over Holy Cross. And that's just, you, you can't coach talent like that. That's just well, raw talent to be able to do what he did to get open and score the touchdown. You know, here, here's the deal. All right. And, and I know Coach Rapato is extremely irritated right now. His kids stopped their feet on the kickoff coverage. Yeah. They got there. They expected the tackle to take place. He didn't go down with a great effort, not to take anything away from his effort, but needed a better effort out of his kickoff team right there. And, uh, you know, Holy Cross looks at that as from giving up a cheap touchdown, but a great athletic, athletic play by Singleton. 
The first NBC Bank Prep Showcase heads to Laplace next week for a huge District 9 two-way showdown between Riverside and St. Charles Catholic. Watch it live next Friday at SportsNola.com or catch the tape delay broadcast next Saturday at noon on WHNO. That's Riverside and St. Charles Catholic next week on the first NBC Bank Prep Showcase. Boy, I tell you what, is, is, that, is that a meat grinder district right there? Woo! Riverside, St. Charles, Country Day, who has a great football team this year. Newman, look at those standings right there. I tell you what, West St. John, Sophie B. right down there at the bottom, but they're good football programs. Look at the guys up top. Look at the Country Day. Country Day put 56 points up again today a and then their win. Yeah. I tell you what, that is a meat grinder 9-2-A district. It's going to be a great game next week. Wow. So Paralu to boot it. Deep for the Tigers. Rodrigue pulls it in at the 8-yard line and he needs a big return and may get one for Holy Cross. He's broken through. Only three people to beat. He beats one and can't get by the second. Wow. Nice return right there. Slowed down by the kicker <laughs> who allowed everybody else to uh, pursue and get back and save the, uh, save the touchdown right there. So you can see him take off down the sidelines. A 48-yard return for Darius Rodrick when, again, Holy Cross needed a spark to get going in this game. Well, it's going to set up great field position. So let's see what they do with this. This will be the third yeah. time in Brother Martin territory with the opportunity to put uh, some points on the board. At the Brother Martin 45-yard line. New quarterback in there, and that is Kyle Schecksneider. Schecksneider to Turner. Turner hit at the line of scrimmage and just driven back. There is nowhere to go. A bunch of people in there, including Michael Clapp. Michael Clapp, Jordan Tafaro, great job right there shedding blocks and sticking Trey Turner. Helmet came off for Trey Turner. He'll have to go out of play. They'll bring in Ashton Smith. By the way, that's the Clapp who's a freshman. Right. Kyle so, Schecksneider right there. He's the uh, change-up quarterback for Holy Cross who had the foot injury earlier in the year. Been used very sparingly, but he can run the football. Here is the give, and Holy Cross has something going. They may go all the way. This, again, is Darius Rodriguez, and Rodriguez is in the end zone for the touchdown. Holy Cross needed to answer the Brother Morton touchdown, and they did on a Darius Rodriguez 45-yard run for a score. Tell you what, he took off like a shot out of a cannon. He came around on the uh, wide receiver sweep, and he hit that seam, and he was gone. Brother Martin didn't have a chance to catch up to him. That is the spark that Holy Cross needs right there. Goodness gracious, you think about this. In the first minute or so plus of the second half, we've had as many points scored as we did in the entire first half by these teams. Gavin Broussard to attempt the point after. And he will kick it up. And it is good. So Holy Cross on the board pulls back within two touchdowns of Brother Martin. 21-6. to six, And watch Darius Rodriguez pick the hole, turn, off the, turn on the afterburners, and off he goes for the score. Holy Cross with the kickoff. It is fumbled, picked up, and Jeremy Singleton just holding on for dear life at the 10-yard line of the Brother Martin Crusaders. Well, Stephanie Altman has a very special guest down on the field. Stephanie? Thank you, Ken. I'm here with Tommy Mitchell from Brother Martin. Tommy, it's been a busy week this week with homecoming festivities. How were they? Yes, it has. It's been a fun week for our students. You know, uh, 
they had some activities during lunchtime during the week, and then this morning they had a pep rally at school. This afternoon out here at the, at the stadium, our students and parents and alumni all came out. And we had a big tailgate. Uh, we've got the game now, and then the boys have a dance, the homecoming dance tomorrow night. So it's been a fun week, and it's a fun weekend, and it's not over with yet for them. So they really enjoy it. And it's actually worked out kind of good this year because it's nice. Last week were our exams, which is a pretty grueling week, and so it, that it lets them have a little fun after the exams. So they worked, worked hard last week. So. You have an open house coming up in November. Can you tell me about that? Yes, our open house is on no, uh, Thursday, November the 5th from 5 to 8 p.m. And um, it's a complete tour of our school building. We have all, uh, all of our clubs are out there, our activities, our academic uh, subject matters. You know, each, each, each academic department has something. And uh, it's a great way for families to come and find out about the school and find out what we're about and what we have to offer and see if it's the right fit for them. You know, the, the, the only thing we ask is that, you know, they come and see what we're about and give us the opportunity. And uh, so hopefully they'll come out. That's, uh, that'll be on Thursday, November the 5th. So, yeah. Sounds like a great time. Thank you so much for joining me, Tommy. Ken, back to you. Thank you, Stephanie. The first play was a keeper by Brogy for 12, brought down by Josh Gallard. And then Bruce Jordan swilling for two, brought down by the big uh, defensive lineman, Ryan Williams. So here's second down, Brogy on the keeper again, throwing against the grain on the other side, and there's a leaping catch up high. No, he dropped it. He dropped it, and almost in the hands of Peyton Oquan, it would have been a big gainer, but he couldn't hold it. There's bootleg action right there, faking, swelling, bootlegging to his left, looking for Oquan, running the drag route downfield right in his hands. He's a Texas commit, should have caught that football. Well, he got hit pretty hard that time, and that may have jarred that football loose by Kyrie Currington. Third down eight for the Crusaders. Brogy being chased, and he's hit on the arm, and it might be intercepted. A diving attempt for the incomplete, say the officials, but a diving attempt down low, and <laughs> I thought for a moment... That was that Gallard or Bro that pulled, that maybe uh, came close to getting that football. Well, I, 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 I don't get it. He, he got his arm uh, in the NFL. They'd be looking at a replay on this and making a decision underneath the hood. You could see him sprinting to his right, right there. Did his elbow come through? I'm gonna tell you right now. I don't think so. They'd be looking at this under the hood. Uh, Eric uh, Roboto would be throwing the red flag, and I think that would have been ruled a fumble right there. Wow, it's good play by the Holy Cross defense, and you're right. Uh, you talk about that sleepwalking that Stephanie talked to the coaches about when they came out of the locker room. Holy Cross playing with a little bit of a sense of urgency here, and uh, they did give them the football, so they called it a fumble. Holy Cross has it. Ashton Smith on the run, breaking tackles. Ashton Smith caught from behind as he falls inside the five-yard line, and Holy Cross, all of a sudden, the fire goes on. Somebody lit that fire, and the Tigers are playing for real. Well, the, the, strip the, yard game. the strip and the fumble recovery right there puts Holy Cross back on the field. They bring Ashton, uh, uh, Ashton Smith back in, and he's the kind of change up to Trey Turner, and they run the inside ISO play right there, and he busts it right up the middle for a nice pickup. First and goal from the five. Remember, the freshman quarterback is not in there. This is your experienced senior quarterback, Sheck Snyder. He will throw to the end zone. The receiver fell down. Darius Rodrigue fell down, could not get to the football. He was lying flat on his face. Well, Sheck Snyder's is a nice change up to fields. You know, Sheck Snyder's going to be a Louisiana College commit. Uh, he had a foot injury very early in camp in the first couple of weeks. And I tell you what, he is a true leader. He's done a great job all year being a leader, working as a, a change-up quarterback to ch the freshman Chandler Fields. And that shows what type of a young man this is, team player. Uh, and he's going to have a great college career when he gets up to Louisiana College. Chuck Snyder, seen limited action this year because of the foot injury. Ashton Smith hit at the five, driven back to the six, and he will have no more. So that'll bring up now a third down for the Tigers, and they have really got to get on the board to keep their momentum going. 
Nice tackle right here by Soman Anderson. Does a nice job wrapping him up, bringing him down to the ground. This young man, Soman Anderson, is the tackle leader for the Brother Martin defense. We kind of highlighted him at the beginning part of the game. He's 5'10", 210-pound junior. He covers sideline to sideline, and I tell you what, John Norris is really high on this guy. He's very athletic, and he's very physical. There he is right there, 49 tackles. He leads the team. He's a fine football player, and he made a nice play right there on Ashton Smith. Quill House backfield for the Tigers. Here is the fake to Ashton Smith. Sheck Snyder throws it into the end zone. Overthrows Tyler Lamb, who had gotten behind everybody. But the pass floated high off the fingertips of quarterback Kyle Sheck Snyder. I like the play call. Play action pass. Fakes the inside ISO play. Sets up the tight end in the corner. Just a little overthrown, but I really do like the play. I like how they go after the end zone right there. On the play, great fake by Smith. And you're going to see the overthrow right there, oh, just so off his fingertips. All right, Coach, decision time. Fourth down and goal at the five. They are bringing in the field goal kicker, Gavin Broussard, who is three of four on field goals, has 40-yard range easily. His long is 42. This will be a 22-yard field goal. Sheck Snyder, the quarterback, is holding. It is Put down, kicked up, and good. So a 22-yard field goal by Gavin Broussard makes this a 21-10 ball game with 9-11 to play in the third quarter. And boy, how different the start of this second half has been compared to the start of the first half. Gavin Broussard, the kicker, with the 22-yard field goal. Well, it's turnovers and special teams. And uh, special teams started with the uh, kickoff return, and then we had a strip fumble right there for a turnover. Holy Cross makes a wise decision right there and kicks the three. I think that's very wise. If you're injured on Friday, the Oshner Sports Medicine Institute is open on both the North and South Shore for Saturday morning clinic. Oshner Sports Medicine, the region's most comprehensive sports medicine services. Great group at Oshner and love the fact that you can get the Saturday morning clinic. Right. Yeah, you, you, well, well, that's, I know you. You're in a right. softball game on Friday night. You're in volleyball games, probably a little flag football. You, you probably oh, need some of that. Me? Now that you've got the time, right? <laughs> it's, it's just you've physical. I had a chance to it's, do that before. I got to go in there because it's physical up here in the booth, dude. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's why I'm going to go in there and get a little treatment. Now, Holy Cross likes to pooch kick, and uh, they kick this one just a little bit deep, and again, look out, here comes Sickleton again, and he is such a dangerous receiver. Jeremy Singleton this time with a 40-yard return, and we are just seeing some excellent returns on special teams to set up good things. Great block right there, but once again, I'm looking at the guys in white on their kickoff coverage. They're missing tackles like they missed one right there. Their feet are stopping. They're out of sight of their lanes. That's something going forward in the rest of the year that I know Coach Rabada is going to make sure that he gets cleaned up. When he looks at this film tomorrow, he's going to talk to his guys and say, fellas, you know, we're giving a field position on kickoffs. We gave up a touchdown on a kickoff. These are things that cannot take place continuing on the rest of our season in the Catholic League and on into the playoffs. And the end result of that is excellent field position at the Holy Cross 45-yard line for Brother Martin to start this drive. First down. Brogy with Bruce Jordan swelling behind him. will give it to Bruce Jordan and let him do his thing as he just charges forward, taking players with him for the ride inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. Still a nice job by the Holy Cross defense, keeping him, you know, and bottling him up, but not allowing him to break off the big, big run right there. That was a little counter play for Swelling. He falls forward and picks up four or five yards, and it brings up second and extremely manageable for the offense. Brogy loves to work from that gun. Does so. Here's the outlet pass going right side to Robertson. Didn't fool anybody. He goes down very quickly. Taylor Fleming. 
Well, right there, the ball hits Dennis Robertson right in the hand on a little uh, 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 play action pass. Again, faking swelling across the formation. Here comes the fake swelling across the formation and trying to get the ball out on a wide well, receiver. That. I thought yeah. he dropped it after he hit it, but he never did make the catch. Right, right out I to Dennis Robertson hit. there on a wide receiver screen. It just hits him in the hands and he drops it. Brings up third down for the Crusaders. They'll put it in the hands of Bruce Jordan Swilling, who likes to pop to the outside, and when he does, usually good things happen, and he is very close to the first down. Looks like he's got it by a yard. You know, he's so hard to tackle one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, he'll make the first person miss. All right, we'll usually make the second person miss. That's the reason why you got to get a lot of bodies on him to slow him down. And uh, Holy Cross has done a pretty good job already with that tonight. But right there, you can see Swilling uh, uh, makes one person miss, and uh, you know then he's up picking extra extra yardage up. You got a flag on the play. Yeah, we have a flag. Let's see what Eddie Alamore and his crew tell us about this penalty. Dead ball, personal. Five defense. Play was a first down, reset the chains, first and ten. Tell you what, they got a personal foul on the offense right there. I didn't get the number completely. I don't know if he said 55 or 65. Well, there's no 55 right. in the game right now exactly. for, so, for the offense. So, so I, I don't know if they've got the number right, but they do have the personal foul right as far as marking it off, and that's who it's going to be assessed on as Brother Martin offense. And this moves the football. All the way back to the 50-yard line. Still is first and 10. He still got the first down here, but they just lose a lot of good field position. Irv Smith on the catch. Irv Smith with the first down to the 40-yard line, falling forward to the 39. I'll tell you what, Irv Smith is not your prototypical tight end. You know, he's more like your uh, uh, wide receiver, H-back. Uh, type of guy that does a great job blocking at the point of attack. He'll get out into routes and he'll catch the ball. He's going he's gonna to have a huge college career doing the things that college offenses are going to want him to do. Brogy with a good fake. Good toss. Incomplete, batted down. And... Uh, I tell you what, right now this Brother Martin offense is kind of a little sluggish. I was now, about to say that. They, don't, they, don't to to say, they in, just look out of sync. Right, they're out of sync. They're a little sluggish, getting the ball knocked around. They're not, they're not, very, uh, not very safe with taking care of the ball. Great block right there by uh, number 21, Kenny Abeer, a 200-pound senior two-lane commit from Holy Cross. They, they're just kind of out of sync, the Brother Martin Crusader offense is. Second down, 10, give the Bruce Jordan swelling and... He'll just do his left side thing, hit into the line, and get up to the 35-yard line. So right. that's a gain of five. Well, he picks up five right there. But once again, I don't know if you notice. We'll see it right here. On the, here it is, outside zone stretch. Started off with not a very good snap. He's running outside zone stretch. But look at him kind of hesitate right there. His feet kind of stutter before he decides to uh, actually put a burst on. Now, he's doing that at five yards. What if he would have hit that thing a little bit harder? He could have been gone. So, I mean, right now they're just kind of out of sync. You know, 16 rushes, 86 yards. He's going to get his yards. Holy Cross is commendable for kind of bottling him up, not letting him get the big play. This time to fake the Bruce Jordan swelling and a throw to an open receiver. But, again, the receiver lost his footing down there, Dennis Robertson, and just had trouble backing up and backpedaling to the ball. But he was open if he could have just... Kept going. He might have run under that football and grabbed it. Well, Brother Martin's in four-down territory right now. I, I doubt they're going to punt the ball. They're not going to be able to uh, uh, kick a field goal at this stage. So they're going to, you know, obviously uh, four-down territory this right here and go for it. And on this fourth is fourth down. down. So Right. So, I mean, it, 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 overthrow right there to Robertson brings up this fourth down. It's fourth and five. Now watch the battle at the lower part of your screen. Now they're shifting Irv Smith. And Andrew McGuire down here with Singleton. For a while, you had Singleton and Myers one-on-one -on -one with each other. Here's the snap. Brogy is looking. Brogy's throwing incomplete. Holy Cross will take over on downs. Just that kind of... Sm flag down. Hold on. Flag down. So maybe this drive isn't over. Let's see. Well, they got the flag. They're, they're pointing off uh, that uh, Holy Cross uh, might be in an infraction here. But just not really Ryan, smooth. Ryan, hands to the face. Personal foul. Defense, number nine, hands to the field. Wow. 10-yard penalty, first down. That's big. 
That's huge because Holy Cross would have had the ball right there on downs at the 648 mark. And uh, not bad field position. Now they give Brother Martin the football with a first down. Well, it, and you're close to the red, actually right on the tip of the red zone, right it, on the edge of the red zone. Yes, we were just talking about how Brother Martin seems to be out of sync. You know, that was a really good series of downs right there for the Brother Martin offense, but then we just given them the first down by getting the hands up into the face and a personal foul. Wow. So first down, give to Bruce Jordan Swilling. He'll take a rugby scrum with him for a ride inside the 10 down to the 9-yard line and move the chains again. It'll be first down and goal for the Crusaders. Tell you what, that's a nice run. That's the type of run you're used to seeing him make. The 10, 15-yard burst right there on the zone read, or excuse me, the inside zone play where he's picking his way through and then he's going to duck that shoulder and fall forward. That's, that's, that's the uh, decisiveness that you see out of a solid running back right there. Closing in on 100 yards rushing at uh, 98. On first down, Jacob Clapp just came into the game at the right tackle spot for Brother Martin, but they don't run toward him. They run toward the other side and don't get anything there. Tell you what, great counterplay right there. You're going to see there's the pull, there's, there's the kick Jordan. up, there's the seal. You got penetration up front right there by uh, Kenny Abeer. Does a great job getting penetration up the field where it's going to shut everything down on the counter tray. Second down. Goal of the nine. And whistle. Play stopped. Flag down. This is Holy Cross again. Holy Cross lined up in the neutral zone, so they're going to kill the play like they do in high school, and they're going to mark off five yards on the infraction. It's just going to put the ball inside the five-yard line for Brother Martin. So let's think about this. They're at the five-yard line because of a couple of huge penalties, the fourth down penalty, and now lining up inside the five-yard line, and that's enough to irritate any head football coach. Holy Cross, one penalty in the first half, three here in the third quarter, including the big personal foul that eliminated them taking over on downs and allowed Brother Morton to score this touchdown with Bruce Jordan swilling over the right side for the touchdown from four yards out. His second touchdown tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, they're, uh, you're, they're yelling for Bruce right now. Those yeah. aren't boos you're hearing. And, you know, that was an outside zone play. But I'll tell you what he did is he ran through a couple of tackles right there. He ran through a couple of arm tackles by Holy Cross who did not do a good job tackling right there on that play. So, second big touchdown for Swilling on the night. And the sad part right now is if you're Holy Cross, you're scratching your head going, we could have taken over on downs. Well, I mean, but that's yeah, not the way it works. Or it could have taken over and downs. They had a little momentum coming off of their big score when they had the ball. And uh, a couple of penalties puts Brother Martin right back in a position to let Swilling score his second touchdown on the night. Perilou with a point after, and it is good. So there's time out of the field, 5-34 to play in the third quarter, 27-10. to 10. Take a look at Jordan Swilling with another touchdown this year.
28 to 10, Brother Morton tagged on that extra point and leads Holy Cross on Bruce Jordan Swilling's 27th rushing touchdown of the year. Short kick, Holy Cross on the return. They've got a little bit of room. Here come the Tigers. They need something special. Brett Carter on the return, and he's finally pushed out of bounds. So Holy Cross, when they have needed something special from special teams, gets a big one right there from Brett Carter, as they had earlier gotten from Darius Rodriguez that led to their first touchdown. This time a 37-yard return by Carter. Well, I'll tell you what, both head coaches are going to address this kickoff coverage tomorrow. You know, that's not to take anything away from good blocking, good setup on the uh, return teams. Great job right there. Great run by Carter. But you've got to have better coverage like this, playing this deep into the season, into your district. And I'm sure that's going to be addressed by both head coaches tomorrow. Great you know, field position. Again. Well, speaking of that, it's hard to believe that every Holy Cross play in the third quarter has been run in Brother Martin territory because of great kickoff returns, but they don't have a lot of points to show for it, and they've got to get some right here. So they keep it on the ground, and Sheck Snyder will keep it himself. So, again, the senior quarterback, Kyle Sheck Snyder, who has seen limited action this year in there for Chandler Fields and making things happen here in the second half. Running quarterback Reed O right there, a read option. Uh, he, he pulls the ball off the uh, wide receiver sweep, and he sticks it up inside for a nice pickup. Sheck Snyder works out of the gun this year. He's not thrown very much, and he won't this time either. Ashton Smith will go straight ahead for a few. As a matter of fact, when you look at Sheck Snyder, he's 0 for 3 passing. The flag is down, so let's wait and see what this one's all about. 0 for 3, not in this game, 0 for 3 on the season. So when Sheck Snyder's in there, Holy Cross is a running football team. I think they're going to get him for too many people in motion. Actually, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how they're going to call this as far as who was in motion. Dead ball, false start. On the offense, number two, five-yard penalty, second down. Okay, here's my issue with that false start right there. They're calling the false start on the wide receiver who was going parallel to the line of scrimmage and then stopped. I don't know if we'll be able to get a replay on this. Uh, that's legal, okay? You can do that in any league, and you can do that in Canada, and that's not a false start. And that's uh, what the Holy Cross coaches were arguing. That, yeah, that's what they were really, really upset about. That's not good. That's number seven down on the ground, the leading tackler for Brother Martin, Sumon Anderson. Let's hope that his injury isn't too severe. Holy Cross and Brother Martin fans, Mellow Mushroom will donate 10% of your order to your school's athletics department through Saturday night. Stop by the Metairie or even the Covington location. Tell your server you're a Holy Cross or a Brother Martin fan and give back to your school with the best pizza in town. Don't forget to stay mellow with the Mellow Mushroom. Well, I, I can understand why Eric Abato is extremely upset right now. They're getting a uh, five-yard penalty after a nice pickup on an illegal procedure penalty that I believe the officials saw took place with their slot receiver. Problem was is he was going parallel to the line of scrimmage. I knew he made a mistake because he stopped, but that's still not illegal procedure. Going parallel to the line of scrimmage, not going forward in this league, is is uh, a completely uh, a, a, a solid type of play, a type of movement. Well, they help Simone Anderson off the field. Let's take a look at what Brother Morton has in the upcoming weeks. They have one loss. They are trying to keep it like that, but a huge one next Saturday night because it'll be at Yenny Stadium, Rummel, right now undefeated Rummel. And uh, if Rummel wins this weekend, you'll be looking at Brother Morton playing for a uh, a tie, and if Brother Morton keeps the lead here and wins this game, you'll be looking for a battle for the share of the top spot in District 9-5A? Well, they're all big. I mean, that's the bottom line. You look at the rest of that, Rummel, Shaw, and then Jesuit. I mean, they're all big, and you've got to remember the magic number is not <laughs> it's the number two. You, you, you don't want two losses if you're going to still continue to compete for that district championship and also make sure that they get into the top six of the bracket. Look at the, look at the points at. that they've scored. They're, they're averaging over 40 points a game. Just a dynamite offense. And here's Tyler Lamb over on the right side. 
Nice little bootleg action, a yep. nice little throw and catch to Tyler Lamb right there. Talking to the Holy Cross coaches before Inside the game. Inside the 10-yard line. They say that uh, Tyler Lamb has one of the best set of hands on the football team. Tyler Lamb, who just committed, should I say not committed, should I say was offered by Nickel State uh, just this past week. And there's a good look at Eric Roboto. He was talking to me about this. They're saying how big they are on Tyler Lamb. Well, you know Roboto's big on him. You know uh, Timmy Rebo down at Nickel State's big on him to make that offer as he tries to rebuild the program down at Thibodeau. And anybody can. He's the guy that can do it. Sheck Snyder. He'll keep. He'll run. He's inside the five. Hit and driven back. Well, that was a brutal hit. Tough hit. First down is what they needed and got it. But Brendan Brown made maybe the touchdown saving hit for Brother Martin. Quarterback read option right there. He pulls the ball, disconnects, rips up the field. Great stick right there by Brendan Brown. But they do pick up the first down to keep the drive alive inside the five-yard line. Still lots of time to go. If Holy Cross could put this one on the board, they could pull again within 11 points of Brother Martin. But they've got to push it across. Just a little less than four and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Sheck Snyder. We'll hand it off to Ashton Smith over that right side, and again, just nowhere to go. He's pushing hard and trying hard, but Brother Morton has a way of just stuffing it in there and helping stuff at that time was John Booker. It's going to bring up third down and inside the five, about third down and goal from about the two-yard line. You're going to see the inside zone read right there. Great tackle, great stick by John Booker right there, getting off his block and really put a nice hit, nice pop on Ashton Smith. Now Brett Carter is over on the right side, but again, Sheck Snyder has rarely thrown this football. He'll hand it off again, straight up the middle, and Brother Morton is able to make the big stop. Booker again with a lot of help and a gang tackle. Got some of that help from Andre Walker and others. Same play again. Inside zone right there. Great stack up, great physical effort right there by the Crusaders. Now, again, decision time. Do you kick the field goal here? There's three minutes and 16 seconds to play. It's only third down. But you've got to look at this and think, if you don't get in, what type of a decision are you going to make? You've got to get in here. I think it's four-down territory. I think you've got, to, you've got two downs to make it into the end zone. Well, I think that's what they're going to, you know, obviously with the, the guy they got at quarterback is going to make that, that type of call by the offensive coordinator. They're going to give it to Hunter McCrane. Hunter McCrane is denied the end zone. He gets to the one-and-a-half-yard line, just inside the two. And now we've got that decision I was talking about. Here we go. I think they're going to make the decision to go for it right here inside the one. Boy, he was knocked back right there. Great job. I'll tell you what, good defense right there. George DeFaro leading that charge. I think they're going to make that decision that they're going to go for it right here. Well. Now what do I do? I'm going for this thing right now at this stage of the game. I am. Down inside the one. Absolutely. I think this is a good call because you're down to the final Less than two and a half minutes of the third quarter. Sheck Snyder will go on to center. Sheck Snyder with the give to Rodriguez and whistles. Plo, uh, play blown dead. Do we have a flag down? I think we got time a timeout. I think we got a timeout call. Timeout call at the last second by Holy Cross. You know, you talk about the, you know, few plays in a football game that make up the most important ones. I would say this is probably for Holy Cross, not just a major important play for this game. This is a major important game for where they are in the Catholic League and the rest of the season right here. This decision on fourth down. That's the reason why he calls timeout the last second. He wants to make sure he's got the right call and that he has the right personnel on the field. Well, if you're any one of the Holy Cross players you'd like to focus under pressure and focusing under pressure, confronting adversity, managing anxiety, being uh, self-confident are challenges that most high school athletes face on the field, in the classroom, and in life. And at Winning Actions, Dr. Tony Melito will teach your child how to handle these challenges and thrive under pressure. Call Winning Actions today to find out more. I know if I was quarterbacking or one of the skill position players in this situation, I'd like to spend a little time with uh, Tony Melito. Let's go downstairs for an injury report with Stephanie. Thank you, Ken. I spoke with the athletic trainer for Brother Martin. Simon Anderson has a serious left knee injury, and he is out for the game. Ken, back to you. Hi, Stephanie. 
I hate to hear that about that young man. Absolutely. Here's the big fourth down play for Holy Cross. They've got to get into the end zone. Chuck Snyder hands off Ashton Smith with the dive into the end zone. Touchdown! Holy Cross needed it and got it with Ashton Smith driving over the left side for the score. That play right there could be very well a defining play for Holy Cross, not for just the rest of this game, but for the rest of the season. You say, how important was that? Calling timeout, making sure the personnel was right, and they made a strong decision to make sure they put the ball into a downhill running back's hands like Ashton Smith. So here comes your point after by Gavin Broussard, who has been perfect on 22 attempts and make it 23. The score now 28 to 17. Let's keep it right here and we look at the touchdown. Another look. Counter Trey, the guy that makes the block right there, huge block right there is the left, excuse me, the right tackle number 71, Isaiah Carpenter. Comes across the formation on the counter. Uh, play and does a great job kicking out the defensive end. I love it to see physical offensive line play, and that was a great job right there by not just Isaiah Carpenter, but the rest of the Holy Cross offensive line. I want to go back to Somon Anderson and the news that Stephanie just gave us that he is out for the rest of the game. You've got to hope for this young man and for the Brother Morton team that he's not out for the year. Well, of course, and when you lose a, your, your tackle leader like that, you know, people are going to have to step up, and uh, it's, it's tough losing somebody like that, and Right there, you know, maybe a Simone Anderson could have made the difference right there on the goal line for a Brother Martin defense. A seven-play, 16-yard drive, took three minutes and 30 seconds. Ashton Smith for the two-yard touchdown run to make it 28-17, to and the Tigers now have to kick off. Still 2.04 to play in the third quarter. A lot of time. Again, that short pooch kick by Holy Cross. Fair catch called for and made by Peyton Oquan of Brother Martin. They give up the long return, but heck, the way people have been returning in this game, you're better off with a fair catch at about the 35, 36-yard line than letting somebody return 40, 50 yards deep into your own territory. Yeah, it's keeping the ball out of Jeremy Singleton's hands. No doubt about it. A sky kick it across the side of the formation. Let's keep it out of number three's hands. Let's make sure we get a fair catch, and let's play some defense right here. And that big number 88 you saw on the sideline, that was Peyton Oquan, 6'5", tied in, who made the catch. First down, Brother Martin, Brogy at quarterback. Bruce Jordan swilling in there, but he will throw to the left side, and the catch made over on the left side by Andre, Andrew McGuire, rather. Once again, faking Jordan swilling on a play-action pass and getting it out into the flat to uh, McGuire right there is, is keeping this Holy Cross defense off balance. You can see the fake across the formation, popping the ball right out there to McGuire. Nice throw, nice catch. Nine-yard gain, second down, one. Brogy, just calm in the way he directs this offense. Bruce Jordan swilling just straight ahead to get the first down, move the chains, and he's at midfield before Holy Cross can make the stop. I just saw something I don't see very often out of a Holy Cross defense. I saw a missed tackle by Jacques Boudreau. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the power row. Brother Martin runs power row. They're going to double down, gap down. They're going to get a kick out. They're going to wrap the guard around. And right sitting there in the hole was number 28, Jacques Boudreau, and he missed the tackle right Jordan there. Jordan Swilling got over 100 yards with that mixed tackle. He's up to 106. But Trevor Riley was there to save the day, and he made the tackle. First down after the chains move. Bruce Jordan Swilling around the left side, being chased from behind. Elusive, hard to bring down. But he gets his way, fights his way up to the 45-yard line of Holy Cross. Tell you what, great effort right there. Coming off the back side, kind of blitzing down real hard was Kenny Abear. Uh, coming all the way down the line of scrimmage right there and tripping up Swilling from behind. Kind of tripped him around the ankle right there. You're going to see Swilling kind of grab his leg there for a second and kind of flex it. Hopefully he's okay. Tell you what, he takes a lot of reps, takes a lot of hits. you got to think about how is he going to hold up through uh, 14 games that possibly they could end up in the state playoffs? He's going to throw along to Jeremy Singleton. Singleton with a little bit of a step on Kyle Meyer. And a flag goes down. Look out. Was Kyle Meyer called for pass interference? Or did Jeremy Singleton push off? Because it looked like Singleton was trying to create separation. 
Well, once again, on any interference, there's not going to be an automatic first down. You'll have the yardage tacked off from the previous spot. So let's get our call. Legal man downfield on the offense, number 78. Holding on the defense, number one. Penalty's offset. Second down. All right, Justin so, Runnels was the offensive right. lineman illegally down the field. Well, Kyle Myers grabbed a little jersey. That was the holding. So they both offset. They're going to play second down again. Second down and six. You're right about Jordan Swilling, though. He's carrying almost 20 or more times per ball game. You know, you got to think about there's, that. There's Jim. a good look at Myers, the Florida State commit. And you know, again, I, I want to go back to, you know, Jordan Swilling there again. You know, he's carrying the ball, as you said, over 20 times a ball game or more. All right. He's definitely a workhorse. And I always believe you're going to have to feed that thoroughbred. And he is a thoroughbred. Uh, but, you know, can he hold up? throughout the remainder of the season. Now, you can see Brother Martin tonight is spreading the ball around a little bit more, which is helping him. Now, they're giving it to Bruce Jordan, swelling again, and look at him just take a load of people with him as he gets the first down inside the 35. What Bruce Jordan swelling will do, especially in a game like this with nine seconds to play in the third quarter, if you've got to eat some clock, protect a, a lead like Brother Martin has right now, you can do it by just letting the horse run. Well, nice vision right there, and look how he's protecting that ball. It's high and tight. You know, but uh, they're doing a nice job tonight spreading it around a little bit more. Uh, you know, he's going to get his carries, and uh, as we see the quarter come to an end, but the thing is, is making sure, uh, you know, he's not getting any other tailbacks given it's, you know, uh, spelling him as far as uh, the number of uh, touches that he gets. What a great third quarter. 31 points scored in the third quarter of this one. The fans loving it. Brother Martin with the lead over Holy Cross. Altman down on the field and the Crusaders just trying to keep a long sustained drive going with Bruce Jordan swelling again the workhorse as he has been for the Crusaders all year. Well they run the outside zone stretch right there great job by the offensive line getting the edge set so swelling can pick up four to five yards right there and that's what he's doing tonight he's picking up four here five here seven here you know he just hasn't broken off the long run Pick up four on first down, makes it second and very manageable. Second down and six. Brogy with Swilling on the side of him. Hands off to Swilling again, keeps it on the ground. Swilling straight ahead. He'll be just short of the first down. It'll bring up third down and very short yardage for Brother Martin. Here's what I've talked about on the counter tray. Watch the right guard pull, wrap around, and here comes uh, Irv Smith right there sealing up into the hole. That's what you call counter trade. You can run it with offensive linemen. Uh, you can run it with an H-back or a fullback. Uh, it's a gap play. Brother Martin likes to run it with swelling from the halfback position or the I position. Extra blocking back. Tyre Lee comes back in to block for Bruce Jordan swelling, and he goes around the Tyre Lee block and picks up the first down for Brother Martin. Let's go downstairs to Stephanie Altman. Steph? Thank you, Ken. 
Brother Martin's homecoming has brought back a lot of alumni for tonight's game, but one name stands out dramatically, Tommy Clapp. He played for the Crusaders back in the early 80s and then went on to start at LSU. He has four sons, all of whom currently attend or graduated from Brother Martin, and they all play football. The oldest son, William, even followed in his dad's footsteps and is now a starting offensive lineman for LSU. I'm sure the three youngest all have LSU in their hearts, but we'll see where their talents eventually take them. And if you're, if you're wondering what it's like to live in a house with all these football players, I had a chance to talk with Tommy earlier. He said they go through 10 gallons of milk a week. Ken and Wade, back to you. Wow, 10 gallons a week. Might be the same in a Swilling household because you've got Trey, you've got Bruce Jordan Swilling. They're still at home, and Bruce Jordan just goes 23 yards for a touchdown, his third score of the night, and his 28th rushing touchdown of the year. Ken, you could have ran through that hole. <laughs> tell you what, that, <laughs> was counter, that was counter Trey with a huge hole right there. And you can see a little uh, swing and gate action right here out of Brother Mark. Got to be practicing it because they don't need it in a comfortable lead with 10-19 to play in this one. I'll Leading it 34-17, to Perilou tries to make it 35. I'll tell you what that is in a minute here. It is good. 35-17, Brother Martin. Let me tell you what that is. That's to get everybody else that's watching tonight to work against that. Absolutely. Bruce Jordan Swilling enjoying a three-touchdown night. And Martin has the lead over Holy Cross. Ten minutes and 19 seconds to play in this one, and Brother Martin is flexing its muscle and showing why the Crusaders belong right up at the top of District 9-5A, also probably getting themselves set for the big showdown with Rummel next week, and whoo, that is going to be a big one. See the Crusaders ready to go. That last drive was an eight-play, 64-yard drive, three minutes and 45 seconds, and Eric Roboto knows his team needs another big return as they have gotten on the last two Brother Martin kickoffs to spark something in this Tiger offense. And Kyle Schecksneider off the bench. The senior quarterback has been the guy to spark it. Chandler Fields, the freshman, just could not get it going tonight. But he's going to be a fine one for the Holy Cross Tigers. Ryan Perilou. Or pardon me, Blake Perilou set the kick. And he does. Coming down on the return, Rodrig. And Rodrig gives Holy Cross fair field position, but they're going to have to score and score quickly. You know, as you think back of that touchdown by Jordan Swilling, this is now his third touchdown of the game. And in every game this year, Bruce Jordan Swilling has scored at least three rushing touchdowns or more. Well, I, I, 
He's pretty consistent. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he's, he's, he's the third leading scorer in the state, third leading rusher in the state. Uh, I don't know where he'll be after tonight. But, uh, I mean, he's, he's, he's the workhorse. He's the thoroughbred. Well, the high, of course, was the seven he scored, and you saw seven of them earlier tonight against. And a long pass by Darius Rodrigue on the catch. Rodrigue beats him, and, and he is going all the way for the score. Fields came back into the game to throw it. A 69-yard touchdown catch by Rodrigue. Again, Sheck Snyder does not throw the football because of that foot injury. He has just not been throwing. So when they've got to throw, in comes the freshman Chandler Fields. Throws it 69 yards to Darius Rodriguez and Holy Cross strikes back. Off play action right here. They fake Turner on the inside iso pass. And you can see Rodri getting behind the DB right there. Nice layout pass right there by Fields. Results in six points. Uh, you know, John Norris, uh, the defensive coordinator, Brother Mark, has got to be a little irritated right now. He, he gives up zero in the first half, and now they've put 23 up on his defense here in the second half. Yeah, you're right. That is a little frustrating. And the extra point by Kevin Broussard. You know, it, it's, 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 it's one thing to do a great job in one half. It's the next thing to come out and, and kind of not perform the way you did things in the first half. It, it, that drives coaches nuts. Here's another great look right here. You can see the nice air out pass to the Darius receiver, Rodrigue, who pulls himself away from Ryan Alfonso for a nice catch and a nice score. Twice in this game on first offensive plays from scrimmage, each team has scored the very first offensive play of the game. Brother Martin had uh, Brogy hit Jeremy Singleton for a 39-yard touchdown pass. And uh, here, when Holy Cross really was down and needed something special to happen, Chandler Fields comes into the game, and the freshman hits uh, Rodrigue again, this time for 69 yards, and we've got a 35 to 24 games. Fields had 68 yards passing before the 69 yards touchdown pass. So he got more yardage on that one pass than he did in the entire first half. Sheck Snyder opened up the second half and stayed in, but Kyle Sheck Snyder, because of the injury, just can't pl plant that throwing foot, and he, he's having trouble throwing the football. So when he's in there, Holy Cross is almost a 100% uh, of the time, unless it's a little screen or something, they're a running football team. Well, what Holy Cross needs now is they need a stop. They've cut it to 11 points. Big play. They need a stop. And, uh, you know, I... It's, it's all about momentum. It's all about making, oh, look at that. Onside kick, and it gets loose in the, in the back of the front line of the Brother Martin Crusaders. There's a scramble for it, but Brother Martin has the football. At least they say they do. The officials will unstack this pile and concur. I'll tell you what, that caught me by surprise real quick. I tell you, you know, they usually fake that quick onside. I've seen them do it for years. They fake it. I've seen them do it every now and then. Here's a good look at it right here. They stop, walk back, and here we go. Boom. Look at that. Caught me in the middle yeah. of a sentence right there. I'll tell you what, nice little trick uh, on the special teams parts by Holy Cross right there. And, and guess who gets up off the bottom of that pile? A guy who's gotten that start just recently, Ryan Alfonso. The officials discussing and what are they discussing here well, they like can, a clean recovery by brother martin and a clean kick by holy cross well they're discussing whether or not possibly was the ball touched before the 10 yard uh rule in which the ball must carry in order to be able to be recovered or they're going to wave the flag off just pick you know, up the flag and, look, and everything looked clean to us but of course we have the we have the option of seeing it on the replay what I, I, what I think they're, uh, they're, they're screaming about there was possibly that the ball could have been touched uh, prior to it crossing 10 yards. And uh, let's see if we can see it here. They walk back. Gavin Broussard turns around. There's the onside by him. It gets by that first line behind everybody. And... You know, really couldn't tell right there off of our... Uh, yeah, very, very, very hard to tell. Bruce Jordan swelling on the run. Just takes it right up the middle, and he'll garner eight yards on that carry. Just so hard to bring down, and when you're picking up five or more a carry, you can run a lot of time off the clock. 
Nice little counter play again. You can see at the point of attack, Irv Smith getting up into the hole and sealing off a linebacker. You know, I, I can't talk enough about Irv Smith. I'll tell you what, this guy is going to be a great college football player because, like I said, he's not your prototypical hand-in-the-ground tight end. He's more of your H-back and those sort of things. You can see what's going on with Swilling tonight. Already 168 yards. Yeah, but look at the number of carries. 28 there carries for those 168 yards. And again, just working and working right. and working. He, he's, he's, he, the Holy Cross has made him earn every one of those 126 yards, Ken. You know, 20 carries, and he's taking a pounding tonight, too. You know, he's a, he's a strong, physical young man. He's going to be looking for an ice bath tomorrow. The problem with Brother Martin is they score a lot of points. They can control the football, but they give up a lot of points. They, they allow a bunch of points per game, and that's what's really hurt the Crusaders. They allow 33 points a game while they're averaging 49 points a game with this powerful offense. We looked at their schedule and the results. They have not scored less than 40 in any game this year, and they're close to it now with 35. But they give up so many. They get in scoring contests. Bruce Jordan Swilling has the first down. Another flag on this play. And Bruce Jordan slow to get up here. That's the one guy they cannot afford to lose. He may be tired, but he's hopefully just cramping. But you don't want to see any player get hurt. Any well, got a flag here. Holding on the offense, May 80. It's 10 yard penalty, second down. That was Dennis Roberson, the wide receiver. Take another look and see if we can spot the holding and the injury. All right, here comes uh, Jordan Swilling on the counter play. Right there, he's tackled around the ankle and the knee, and you kind of see his knee kind of flex back yeah. right there. It's either possibly a little knee injury or a little ankle injury. This could be dreadful for Brother Martin. You know, uh, the, the thing about it is is that, you know, he, he averages carrying the ball over 20 times a game. You know, uh, he's going to take some hits. Uh, you can see his mom and dad right there looking down, very concerned. Um, Everybody hoping on both sides of the field, obviously, that there is no injury to this young, fine uh, young athlete. But they're going to be looking at those particular areas on how many times he carries a game and the number of hits he takes. Um, he is the son of Pat Swelling, of course. We've talked about that. The, one of the great names in Saints football. And you've got to just kind of cross your fingers right here and hope that this is nothing serious. Because clean tackle, but it, one of his... One of his knees looked like it just hit. Again, another look at, well, at uh, Pat. Right. It was the way it was kind of twisted. He's up and moving, and they're uh, calling for Bruce, not Booze right there. He's up and moving. That's a good sign. Yes. So let's just hope he's got some sort of strain or some sort of pull right there. And, uh, you know, he'll be fine uh, coming back for next week. You can see he's walking with a little bit of limp right there with a little help coming off the field. And, again, the workhorse for Brother Martin, he averages way over 20 carries per game. And he's getting the yardage. And there's a good back in Eric Lasserre to support him. Lasserre should be the young man coming into the ball game now. But we keep our eye on Bruce Jordan Swilling as we will. Oh, wow. And it is Lasserre, Eric Lasserre, the six-foot sophomore, who's got 160 yards rushing on only 13 carries this year, two rushing touchdowns. Had one carry earlier. No, no carries earlier in this game. Lasserre. Yeah, he did. He had one carry when Bruce Jordan Swilling had to leave the football game because his helmet had come off. Right. So that's his second carry of the game. Hard well, the, running back. The Crusaders have used him in mop-up uh, type of situations where they have been. We've looked at the number of points that uh, the, uh, Brother Martin offense has been putting up this year. So, you know, obviously they've been up big in games, and they'll put Lasserre in for him to get, his, uh, get some carries right there. You know, but, uh, you know, they, they've scored a lot of points this year, but they've given up a lot of points. That's the reason why, talking earlier, John Norris was ecstatic. He was ecstatic at halftime that they, you know, held these guys, find Holy Cross offense to zero points, and then things have kind of turned around. You can see a picture right there of the doctors looking at Swilling's ankle or knee uh, on the bench. Third down and seven, and the officials, well, they got a timeout. Timeout called by Brother Martin before the snap of the football. And you can see Brother Morton just milking every second of the clock right now without Bruce Jordan swelling. They're going to want to just run as much clock and protect this 11-point lead over Holy Cross, 35 
to 24 as the doctors continue to look at that ankle. I thought it might have been the knee, but they're really focusing on the ankle. Well, you know, I've got a great medical staff at Brother Martin, and I'm sure they're going to make sure they uh, do the right thing and get him into uh, the right type of uh, uh, protection to help his ankle or knee or whatever it is. This copyrighted telecast of the first NBC Bank Prep Showcase may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the express written consent of WHNO TV 20. You know, when, when you look at this Brother Martin team, Rummel's undefeated in this district, the only undefeated team in District 95A. The one loss came to St. Augustine, 44 to 47, against scoring more than 40 points but giving up 47. You looked at it on paper, St. Augustine rebuilding, new coach, and you would say on paper, Brother Morton maybe should have won that football game. On paper, Leonard Fournette <laughs> and St. Aug should have never lost the football game uh, last year. Uh, well, heck, on, on paper, the Saints shouldn't have beat the, the Atlanta Falcons on Thursday night. Now, after this play, uh, what's your comments on that? Because that's why we play the games. It's not always just on paper. Lasserre hit on third down, and he'll be stopped way short of the first down at the 45-yard line. First down is across the 50. And uh, do we have another flag down? I think we might have a flag, might have some sort of uh, face mask right there. Uh, but, you know, you can see... Uh, Bruce Jordan scores the foul. Face mask. Defense number 15. 15 yards, first down. Well, yeah. Brother Martin was going to have to punt the football away, and Holy Cross just gave him another first down. Here comes your face mask. Oh, right yeah. there. Wow. Without Got question. Him. Got him right there. That's a 15 yard personal foul. But we saw uh, uh, Mr. Swelling right there on the sideline, uh, checking in on his son. I know his son's real upset, but I'm sure he'll bounce back off of that. Uh, injury whatever he has uh, hopefully he won't be out for next week but you know talking about what you're saying Ken that's the bottom line this is the Catholic League all right and the Catholic League you know uh, anybody can beat anybody on any given night good fake by Brogy and a throw and brother Martin with the pass to Andrew McGuire is threatening for Holy Cross inside the five-yard line and anybody can beat anybody that's why you play the game. Got a flag on this play again. Well, and the flag's way back up near the 30-yard line of Holy Cross. So let's see what happens here. I don't see anything, but that would have been out of our camera range where the flag was thrown in the infraction occurred. Well, you could possibly have some sort of lineman downfield, some sort of hold, something of that nature. They are Depending coming back. The They're bringing it back. So let's get our explanation here. And again, Eddie Alamore is our referee. Looks like we're not going to get an explanation, are we? Well, that's, no, we're not. Oh, no explanation. I'm watching Eddie. We're not even getting a signal <laughs> from Eddie. So it's a... Well, Brother Martin takes the ball. Here we go. They're going to give the ball, and Lasserre finds the room right up the middle and is looking a little bit like Bruce Jordan swelling himself as he's very close to the first down. As a matter of fact, he's got the first down. He moves the chains. The frustrating thing right now for Holy Cross is this is the second time in tonight's ball game when the Tigers could have taken over the ball. They would have forced a punting situation, but a personal foul gives Brother Martin a first down. There's your counter tray again. Huge hole again for it. it was the play that Swilling had scored on down on the goal line. He had a nice, nice job right there again by Irv Smith getting up into the hole and sealing off the linebacker. First down for Brother Martin. They're at the Holy Cross 27-yard line. Here's Lasserre. Very carefully picking his way, gaining a few. Let's go downstairs to Stephanie Altman for an injury update on Bruce Jordan Swilling. Thank you, Ken. Unfortunately, I just found out that Jordan Swilling has a right calf injury, and he is not returning to this football game. Ken, back to you. Well, he's done his work. He's given Brother Morton what they need, the right calf injury. We won't know how serious that is. We keep our fingers crossed for this young man and hope that he'll be back for the Rumble game next week for the Brother Morton Crusaders. Well, you know, they're going to make sure they get the right treatment on it and try to make sure that they take care of it this week, and hopefully they can get him back, as you said. 
Brogy to LaSerre. Brother Martin trying to keep the ball on the ground unless they absolutely have to throw to run as much clock as possible. We're down to five and a half minutes to go in this game. Let me say this. You, you get a nice little performance here by this young LaSerre. Eric, Eric LaSerre. LaSerre, number 21. Now, think about this. You know, it was such a great running back in Jordan Swilling. In comes this young sophomore who is doing what he needs to do, keep the ball on the ground, keep the clock running. What about that offensive line, kid? These guys do an excellent job up front for Brother Martin making sure that their running backs have holes to run in. I saw two that you could even walk through. Absolutely, and again, a good look at uh, Pat Swilling along with Bruce Jordan Swilling. LaSerre on the run, slants to the outside, finds his way to the end zone. Touchdown, Eric LaSerre, and that might be the exclamation point that Brother Martin needs a 19-yard score by LaSerre on a nice slant run outside. I'll tell you what, I like this guy. Me too. He's got a nice little burst. You know, the, uh, I, I believe it was outside zone. He takes it, pops it outside, bounces to his, uh, to his right, and takes it right on into the end zone. Nice burst, nice score. Blake Perilou. Another PAT coming up. He boots it. It's good. And it's 42 to 24 as LaSerre shows that he's got a little bit of Bruce Jordan swelling in him, too, going 19 yards for the score. Brother Martin with the lead over Holy Cross. 4.53 to play in the game. Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, Stephanie Altman down on the field. Tommy Cooper, our stat man in the booth. He's had a busy pencil tonight. And Perilou gets ready to send it on its way. 14 of the 42 Brother Martin points came on drives that would have ended. But personal foul penalties by the Tigers kept them going. And that's frustrating right now. Holy Cross, that close to making this a much more tight, a much closer football game. So the Tigers with a little bit of a return, has a lot of work to do, and only four minutes and 45 seconds to do it in. Well, you know, the story of a couple things for Holy Cross right there, they gave up a couple more penalties that set Brother Martin up for a score. But what was the answer there, and what was real nice, is to see this LaSerre, this young running back, number 21, LaSerre, do a great job right there. And it was awesome to see this offensive line step up and continue to do such a great job on their run block. Ashton Smith in for Trey Turner. And, you know, we really haven't talked enough about the fact that Sheck Snyder and Trey Turner have really been injured and, and not been able to give Holy Cross what they have expected. The freshman uh, Chandler Fields is in at quarterback, throwing incomplete for Jordan Alexis. But the hopes, I think, were that Kyle Schecksneider as a senior quarterback and Trey Turner as a senior running back would really carry the load. Almost had it, bobbled it very, very late. Well, yeah, and, and, and what, but I tell you what, what they still have given this Holy Cross football team is in a tremendous amount of leadership. You know, uh, uh, with, with Sheck Snyder fighting the foot injury that he had early in the year and Trey Turner fighting a shoulder injury from late, earlier in the year, they're still tremendous leaders and they're doing great things for the football team on the sidelines uh, and during practice and walking the hallways of the school. Ashton Smith on the run, short of the first down. What you haven't seen from those two guys is the explosiveness, the breaking of the big plays that they could deliver, that their injuries have held them back from being able to provide to this offense that the Holy Cross so desperately needed this year. Third down for Holy Cross, and they've got to move the chains. This is probably four-down territory even at this point of the game. 
Throwing against the grain. A, a catch by Chandler Fields. Did he get in bounds? Did he pull it down? No, he is out of bounds. No catch, but boy, he almost made another spectacular catch. We saw him with the game-winning catch in overtime against the Jesuit Blue Jays. Earlier this year, he has a way of getting up and pulling them down. Well, Chandler Field keeps the play alive right here. I tell you what, great field presence by this young freshman. Uh, moves to his left, eyes continue to look down the field towards his receivers, and delivers the ball just a little bit out of bounds. Almost a great catch by uh, number nine, Carter. Yeah, the out of bounds foot came down first, and Holy Cross will have to punt it away with 4.01 to play. The punt by Heidensfelder, and it's fair caught by the Crusaders, Andrew McGuire. 35-yard punt, and Brother Martin with the running of, of Lasserre, and of course, we're not going to see Bruce Jordan swelling but since, uh, anymore, but since uh, Lasserre is running like Bruce Jordan swelling was running behind, again, a very senior-laden experienced offensive line you've got to figure that martin was going to use as much time on the play clock as they can before they snap the football and just try to milk this final 353 off the clock and uh head to the week and try to get bruce jordan swilling well you always hear the term about a four minute offense four minute offensive term means that you're going to milk the clock you're going to try to make sure you keep the ball on the ground keep the ball in bounds and make sure that you're using up all of your 25-second clock, which should eat up the play clock. And keep it on the ground to Lasserre, and Lasserre keeps finding seams. He almost breaks this one. My goodness, Lasserre with a touchdown-saving tackle by Kyle Myers. Tell you what, power O right here, gap down blocking, wrap around by number 66. Victor Quinoz doing a great job sealing the edge. The bounce outside by Lasserre picks up a huge gain for the Crusaders. I tell you what, I like the way this young man runs. Again, an all-senior offensive line that, who, guess who helps volunteer coach that group? Tommy Clapp. <laughs> Lasserre with some interesting numbers. He's approaching 100 yards now. He's only got 25 more to go the way he's reeling them off. So that's just a few more carries for him, the way he's reeling off real estate in this game. There he goes, up the middle, hit, driven down. And again, Myers there to help with the tackle. Tell you what, it, it, kind of a very moderate play, if you want to call it there, right there. But what stuck out to me right there was he took a nice little jump cut to his right because that's where his vision took him. That's what mm -hmm. good tailbacks do. All right, they can run downhill. They can see something to the right or to the left. They can stick the foot in the ground and make a lateral jump cut and then get vertical up the field again. Tell you what, this guy's pretty good. And you know, this same running back combination will be back for one more year for this team. Here goes Lasserre. Lasserre might be making a statement tonight saying, Coach, I need more reps. After that 35th and 36th carry by Bruce Jordan Swilling, put me in, coach. <laughs> give, give me some reps. He's Counter tray right there. Moving the chains. Nice block by Irv Smith. There you go. He's even got a uh, Lassier ducks his shoulder, takes on the tackle right there. It falls forward. Things that good tailbacks do, good running backs do. Just under two and a half minutes to play in the game. Brother Martin doesn't need any more points. Holy Cross's defense has got to stiffen a little bit. Once again, Brother Martin's offense with that last touchdown has gone over the 40 mark. They have scored 40 or more in every game they have played this year. Lasserre again. Big hole. Lasserre splits the seam, breaks the tackle, and waltzes into the end zone 27 yards for the touchdown. I think his family's buying a DVD. Maybe two. This game. Maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you what, look at this. Outside stretch, zone stretch, boom, runs through an arm tackle right there. Bad tackling job by that Holy Cross defender and allows Lasserre to squirt straight down the center of the field into the end zone. If you're interested in purchasing a DVD copy of today's game, send an email to prep, P-R-E-P, -E prep at sportsnola.com or call our offices at 504-681-0120. During normal business hours, you'll get a reply with more information on how to purchase 
the DVDs. Now, if you're Jay Roth of Rummel and you're watching this football game and you're saying they might not have Bruce Jordan swilling next week, now you're looking at LaSare and you're going, but they've got somebody that's pretty doggone good if they don't get him back. Let me tell you, if, what, let me tell you what Jay Roth's thinking right now, all right? There's a good look right there. They're giving um, all high fives and everything on the boundary. Let me tell you what Jay Roth's thinking right now. Jay Roth's got his mind on the Jesuit Blue Jays because it's another Catholic League game, and that's what he's got tomorrow night at 6.30 right here in this stadium. But he's probably thinking on his way home tonight if he was here watching this game that I tell you what, Brother Martin's got a very, very talented backup running back, and if we don't see Bruce Jordan swelling next week, we're definitely going to see a good one in Eric LaSare. PAT good, 49 to 24. And, and I do want to ask you about the injury that we heard Stephanie give us on the up, uh, update from down below. You know, you hear a lot of knee injuries, ankle turns, cramping, but you rarely hear a right calf or a left calf injury in football. For our fans listening, from your coaching experience, have you had any experience with that kind of injury? And you can see Coach Roboto not happy with the, the way things have turned out tonight. I know it didn't go according to plan. Well, the first thing about the calf injury, Ken, you know, is, is it a pull? Is it a stretch? Is it a strain? Let's hope it's not any type of tear. All dependent on the way his foot was flexed, possibly, the way his knee was bent. Uh, they'll probably take a good hard look at it tomorrow, the trainers and the doctors from Brother Martin. They're going to have it iced down tonight and uh, make sure that it, uh, uh, it doesn't swell too much. They'll get it in and uh, possibly MRI it early at the beginning part of this week to be able to see exactly what's wrong with it. The MRI is going to give them the best picture of knowing exactly what's wrong with the calf. Guy, you just looked at a few moments ago, the coach on the sideline was John Norris, the defensive coordinator. And his defense not allowing as many points as they have been averaging all year. This one breaks the plane. Rodri can't get to it. It'll come out to the 20-yard line for Holy Cross with 2.03. Brother Martin has put the stamp on this one, on what they need. And... Uh, you go back to this Brother Martin defense. If John Norris wanted to see something, I know after shutting out Holy Cross in the first half of this football game, he didn't want to come back and give up 24 in the second half. Yet his defense did make some big stops when they had to, and that's very important. Good look at John Norris right there, and he's been around. Two pro football teams uh, he's played for. He, one time he was the president and general manager of the Voodoo here in New Orleans. He knows football. He can get it done. Asked him today who was the toughest player he ever went up against uh, in the pros. And, uh, man, he said, Gordon Hanna, without, uh, without question, he says, just a, a beast. Just uh, like Big Bad John and the old uh, record, the old guy in the mines back then. So here for the Holy Cross Tigers, a run by Leighton Johnson. A little screen by Leighton Johnson. Well, you can see Schnecksteiner's back in the game here. He's going to run a little sprint to his right, throw it back to his left on the delay screen to Leighton Johnson, who's going to get up the field. Great block out out there on uh, on the edge, and he's going to get up the field and have a nice pickup. But getting back real quickly to John Norris, what he's probably a little tweaked off about is that he gave up uh, so far 24 points in the second half after such a great first half. Look, defensive coordinators have pride. All right? yep. Yep. They, they do not want to give up points because they look at that as a reflection on themselves like they didn't get their kids ready, coach their kids up well enough, whatever the case may be. What he's a little tweaked off about, I would think, is kind of the way the points were given up in the second half. Long bomb, you know, uh, uh, a, a couple of miscues took place, and those are things that he's going to have to get cleaned up tomorrow when he gets uh, taken care of. And then, of course, one of the touchdowns was on a kick return, which the whole team is going to have to address tomorrow when they're in a film session with um, Coach Bonice because you do not want to give up cheap touchdowns on kick returns as you're going forward in district. Long overthrow by Chuck Snyder. I said, Gordon, how did I ask him again? He, and and uh, just asking him about his pro career days. There's Jordan Swilling. He's up. Boy, look at the ice pack and the wrapping on that right calf. Uh, I'm sorry, right... Um, Calf. 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 That's it. Right right calf injury. Or you want to call it the gastrocnemius? <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed. <laughs> Thank you. So am I. <laughs> because that's what it's called in my anatomy classes. I am really impressed. I'm glad to see Sheck Snyder throwing the football a little bit here. 
If he can, he can always run it. Gets the first down right there for Holy Cross. And I like to see the, the fight in this Holy Cross team of, of pushing down, even with less than a minute to play in the game, 52 seconds, trying to find a way to put a few more points on the board. Nothing open down the field. He decides to tuck it and run it. I tell you what, he's a hard-nosed competitor. He's going to have a great career at Louisiana College. I've been watching that young man play for a few years now here at Holy Cross. He is a competitor. He is a hard-nosed football player, and he just loves this game. Wanted to also talk about the defensive coordinator on the other side. We talk about a, a young man who has done very, very well, Ashton Smith, on that screen, and he is very close to a first down, and he will move the chains. He's got it. Adam Giglio has done such a great job with the Holy Cross defense. They have not missed tackles in a game like this all year. They missed some tackles and I think a little frustrating in that twice his defense made stops one time though a personal foul Holy Cross's offense would have taken over on downs but a personal foul gives Brother Morton the, the ball. They score a touchdown. Another time a penalty on, on third down after they make a stop and would have forced a third and long punt on fourth and long and again a penalty gives Brother Martin a first down so that's frustrating as that's an incomplete pass included the Brett uh, intended rather for Brett Carter well but uh, I know frustration for right. Adam Giglio who has done a great job with this defense for Holy Cross well I, I coached against Adam Giglio when he was a linebacker at Holy Cross and uh, uh, he was a tough nose hard nose competitor and he has brought that same style of, of effort and compassion and intensity to this Holy Cross defense. So there's things they're going to have to clean up going forward for the next couple of weeks in the Catholic League. Remember, all of these teams are not only vying for a Catholic League championship, but they're also trying to get that number six up to one spot on the bracket in the playoffs. Uh, and they could get a bye. Incomplete pass. Uh, almost intercepted there by Matthew Beninati. So Holy Cross has a third down, 12 seconds to play. They'd still like to put one more on the board, even though this one is decided. Holy Cross will fall to four and three on the year, two and two in district. And Brother Martin with the win will up their record to six and one, three and one in district. And again, sets up the big showdown, depending on what Rummel does in their Saturday night game right here at Tad Gormley. Here's the scramble. Sheck Snyder on the throw. Brett Carter's got it. He'll make a run for it. He's pushed out of bounds with two seconds to play near the 10-yard line. He'll be pushed out at the 11-yard line. Well, it's like I said. All of these teams in the Catholic League are in the Division I 10-team bracket for the playoffs. What they're vying for right now, and you can see the snap over the head right there and the nice scramble job by Sheck Snyder, but what they're vying for is they're trying to be one through six on that bracket, Ken. If they're one through six on the bracket, they have a bye the very first week of the playoffs. How important is a bye coming off your district schedule like a brutal Catholic League schedule? To I'll have a bye, you. get yourself well, and continue on into the playoffs. Here's a lob into the right back corner of the end zone for Carter. He's got it, but he's out of bounds. It almost made the magic happen in the same spot he did for the Jesuit game, but this time he was out of bounds. And the final score in this one is Brother Martin, 49, Holy Cross, 24. We'll be back with our post-game show right after this, a thrilling football game in District 9-5A. victory for Brother Martin over Holy Cross 49 to 24. She's got the winning head coach Mark Bonice Stephanie down to you. 
Thank you, Ken. I'm here with head coach Mark Bernice. Coach, they tried to catch up with you in the second half. How did you keep your team ahead? Oh, um, yeah, they did. So, you know, we got to tell, we got to say about those guys, they, they did a great job of fighting. Um, so compliments uh, to Holy Cross, but real proud of our kids. Um, had some adversity. It's going to happen in a football game. Our kids responded real well to adversity, so I'm real proud of them, you know? You have to be worried about injuries at this point. How is it? We'll be fine. You know, we got, we got nicked up, a, 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 you know, got nicked up. A couple guys uh, got nicked up, but we believe this. It's the next man up, you know, and I'm really happy, uh, real proud of the guys that stepped up when other guys went down. Um, to me, it shows, you know, we talk about team, tough, compete, finish. It shows uh, the component of team that our guys already believe in one another and the next person steps up and succeeds. Thank you so much, Coach. Congratulations Thank so much. again. Thank you very much. Thank you all very Thank much. You. Thank you. Ken and Wade, back to you. Thank you, Stephanie. I know he's worried about Bruce Jordan swelling. 29 carries tonight, 173 yards and three touchdowns. Lassar came in to finish it up in the fourth quarter. Ten carries, 114 yards, two touchdowns. Brother Martin on the night, 300 yards rushing, 146 yards passing. And uh, they just look like a, a powerhouse. And I tell you what, I hope Bruce Jordan swelling is okay for next week. And that Rummel Brother Martin showdown is going to be something to behold. Well, you know, Rumble's going to have a big one tomorrow night against Jesuit. It's a Catholic League game. But Brother Martin did what they needed to do here tonight, scored a bunch of points. I thought they played a great first half on defense, gave up some cheap stuff on, on defense the second half. But I tell you what, I like the balance that they had tonight offensively. They showed that they could throw the football. They showed that they could throw play-action pass, that they didn't have to uh, always depend on Dorton Swilling to score all of the points. You saw some big plays tonight by Singleton on some catches. I like the balance. I like where they're going forward with the offense for the rest in of their district games. All right, that's going to be it. The final score in this one is 49-24. to Brother Martin with the victory. Thanks for joining us. The first NBC Bank Prep Showcase heads to Laplace next week for a huge District 9 2A showdown between Riverside and St. Charles Catholic. Watch it live next Friday at SportsNola.com or catch the tape delayed broadcast next Saturday at noon on WHNO. For Wade Kaiser, Stephanie Altman, and our entire WHNO crew, I'm Ken Berthelot. Once again, your final score. Brother Martin, 49, Holy Cross, 24. From 